What's good, IE Sports Radio fans? It's your boy, the Soul Cal Saint, back at it again with another fresh episode of the Premier Professional Wrestling Podcast, the IE Wrestling Show, your direct feed for all that is professional wrestling on the only network that is your direct feed for all that is sports, IE Sports Radio. Man, we got a lot to talk about. I wanted to thank y'all real quick uh, for joining me last week on that special episode I had with my boy Brent Jackson. Uh, when we did that uh, career retrospective on the late, great Eddie Guerrero, we got to honor him on his birthday last week, which uh, was a pleasure of mine. It was something I always wanted to do here on this podcast, and I was finally able to get it done, and I got to do it with one of my very best friends here on planet Earth, so that was really awesome. So shout out to Brent. Uh, Brent will be a face that you guys will uh, see again here on the IE Wrestling Show. I guarantee that he will be back again uh uh, here on another uh, episode for sure. Um, and uh, we got some stuff to talk about. We got a, a little bit of news, wrestling news to talk about, of course. And we got um, some uh, some events to talk about. Uh, AEW Wrestle Dream uh, took place, uh, I believe it was over the weekend. And we got TNA's big uh, pay-per-view of the year or premium live event. Um, their version of WrestleMania. You know how like each, each uh, company seems to have their version of of a WrestleMania type event. WCW had Starcade. Uh, ECW had November to Remember. Of course, WWE has WrestleMania and TNA has Bound for Glory. So we're going to be discussing Bound for Glory today as well. Um, and uh, real quick, just give a shout out to IE Sports Radio. Please, if you can, follow IE Sports Radio on all social media platforms on X, Instagram, Facebook and TikTok at IE Sports Radio that is the handle and also we are live streaming right now on YouTube. Right now we're live streaming on X, the official IE Sports Radio X account and the official IE Sports Radio YouTube page. So please if you if you like what we're doing, if you're enjoying the show, give a like, a share and subscribe. It'll help us out greatly. Please Hit that like button, hit that thumbs up, whatever. Uh, please hit that heart button if you like what we're doing. Uh, don't be shy if you're in the comments section. If you're watching live, hit up the comments. Give me a shout out. Say what's up. I'll shout you out here live right here on the show. Um, if you cannot watch us live at the moment, do not fret because we are also available on multiple platforms of podcasting uh uh, uh, multiple podcasting platforms. Uh, so if we're not live, you can actually hear it later on the download on all these awesome uh, uh, podcasting uh, 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 sites, uh, Apple Podcasts, Breaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Audible, CastBox, Deezer, Podcast uh, Attic, Podchaser, and Geo7. Not only that, we have an official IE Sports Radio website. Go to iesportsradio.com, iesportsradio.com. And you can actually join for free, and you can create an account where you can interact with all the hosts of the IE Sports Radio crew. You can check out all of your favorite IE Sports Radio shows, like mine, the IE Sports Radio's uh, only professional wrestling podcast, the IR, the IE Wrestling Show. I have an official uh, uh, page for my show, iesportsradio.com backslash the IE Wrestling Show, where you can check out all of my past episodes if you want to catch up on some episodes you never got to hear. If you're becoming a fan of mine, which is awesome, thank you. Um, and if you like what we do on IE Sports Radio and you want to throw some shekels our way to show your support for IE Sports Radio, go to the IE Sports Radio shop. That's iesportsradio.com backslash shop where you can get official IE Sports Radio merch, just like this T-shirt, the official IE Sports Radio logo T-shirt, and it has our catchphrase on it. IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And we have hats as well. We have uh, tank tops. We have women's T-shirts. Uh, with the uh, new fall and winter seasons coming, you can get um, – hopefully we'll have hoodies available as well. So just keep a, keep a lookout for that on the IE Sports Radio official merchandise shop. And please follow me on the X and on TikTok at IE Sports Radio's uh, – excuse me, at IE Wrestling Show. That's IE Wrestling Show is my Twitter handle as well. And right now I'm going to introduce you – to one of my good brothers here, he's a. Uh, I I got I got to just say this. I mean, hopefully, I'm not speaking for him, but I would love to say he's official. He's officially a part of this show from now on. He is my bro here at IE Sports Radio. T Five, the host of the Crescent City Connection. That's right, my bro. Who is T Fizzle? Is back. Welcome back. 
to the show. These are his Twitter handles you see down on the ticker. That's at who is T Fizzle and at Crescent City underscore I E. What's good, brother? Welcome back to the show, man. Man, well, man, thanks for having me back, man. It was it was kind of weird. I, I peeped you out. I peeped y'all out last week from the from the uh, from the doctor's office, man. I was like, man, let me let me see what you know how the Wi-Fi going in here. I said, all right, let me oh let, let me let me get on. Let me see what's going on with the homie. I saw y'all Eddie Guerrero tribute, man. That was what's up, man. You know how I feel about Eddie, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, that was a. Uh... That was one of my uh, best friends from high school, uh, Brent, that uh, did that jumped on the show with me to to do that, uh, and it was really, uh, you know, it was a very, I was, it was really cool to have him there um, on the show last week, especially for that particular episode, because uh, I mean, me and him, like when we met in high school, that was kind of what first got us like talking was wrestling, and um, at the time, Eddie Guerrero was, uh, you know, starting to come up on the rise. You know, he was starting to hit those those milestones where he, you saw like, man, maybe he's going to reach a spot that he's never been, you know, in before, you know what I mean? Uh, Brent, yeah. and, uh, Brent and Larry um, actually um, were, I think are the same age. Uh, so, I mean, like me and him, we're, we're, me and Larry and, and Brent, I think are about two years apart. I'm two years older than them. So I would have been in my junior year of high school whenever I met them freshman year, I believe if I'm not mistaken. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, and we've been tied ever since, uh, you know, uh, um, and, uh, Brent, uh, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's like a brother, man. Like, honestly, he's, he's more family than he is friend. You know what I mean? So you got those friends that are just yeah. like, they transcend that, 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 that friend title. So, yeah, it was really cool for him to, to join me last week for that show. And uh, hopefully, uh, we'll have a show where all three of us can be on here discussing wrestling, man. Cause, uh. Uh, I would love to have him back on the show and interact with you as well, man, because it's been a pleasure, like I said, having you on this show. You know, hopefully, uh, uh, you know, it goes without saying, hopefully I can say like, you know, you, I want I would love for you to just, you know, just I don't want to. I, I would love to take that guest that guest uh, role, that guest title off you and just say you're a part of the show. You know what I mean? Hey, take, <laughs> man, take, take it off. Take it off, man. <laughs> hey, man, you like, hey, tag. Hey, we, hey, SoCal Saint, uh, the Crescent City Savage. Tag the, the, the new tag team, the new mega powers. Hey, 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 the new two man power trip. I'm all for it. Let's go. Hell yeah, bro. I like that shit. New style APA, the new age Dudley boys. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, man, we, back, we, backstage, we backstage at IE Sports playing poker and stuff, man, taking people out of oh, yeah. their money. <laughs> right? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. That's you. You got it. Right. Damn. <laughs> uh, you hit that perfectly, son. You hit that perfectly, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, damn man. So, sh bro, I know I don't. I, we can talk. I know it's a sore subject right now amongst the Saints fans. But what is going on, bro? Ooh, Lord what Jesus. is going on, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> bro, I don't know what to say, man. Ah, uh, man. If, if for those of y'all who, who've seen the show, man, I'm trying to keep a straight face, bro. I'm trying to. You know, I'm trying, uh, I'm trying man, myself. You know, I was being optimistic. It looked kind of good in the Buccaneers. The first half of the Buccaneers game has started off bad. Yeah. No lie. But then all of a sudden, they let us back in the game. And I was like, I was bucking. I was, I was like, man, how you come? How you let us come back from 20 points? Ah, I was bucking like a tank, bro. Rattler was doing good. The defense was getting like yeah. Rat, 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 Rattler showed out. He did well. You know, I you know Man, he didn't. I was, he didn't uh, I was bucking like a tank. But then the dreaded second half had to be played. <laughs> oh, I know. Bruh, it's not looking good, man. Like the, the only bright spot is you know Spencer Rattler looking good. He's got you know, potential. We got some, we, he's got potential. We got, he's got some potential, man. He could be the dude. He could be the dude. And uh, we got like a bunch of injuries. We got a quick, we got a quick turnaround Thursday. Sean Payton and the Broncos coming through. Man, we got to win this one, we can, man. I hope we can get a W on Thursday, man. This will be uh this will be one of the first times where a game is on when I'm not working and I can actually sit and enjoy it because uh, Thursday is one of my oh, off days. So to get to, hopefully, it's one that's of those games that that'll be broadcast on Amazon so I can actually watch it. Oh yeah, it's two. It's, it's Thursday, so it's definitely gonna be on Amazon. Oh, perfect. And yeah, I'll definitely be able to actually kick back and relax and and watch my Saints against the Broncos. So, 
Uh, yeah, let's just. I mean, like I, I mean, you you put you put the nail on the head right there. So I mean, they. It's been it's been rough. It's been a rough uh, couple weeks, man. But hopefully we can turn it around. It's not too late in the season. It's still pretty early. Yeah, though. man. Like, like despite what some people think, our second half of the uh, schedule is very favorable. It's yeah. very favorable, especially if we can get some of these these injured dudes back. Right. Especially on the front, on the offensive line, we can make a we can do something. We can be in. Right. So I guess know, those, uh, those rumors about Devontae Adams, uh, you know, that, that that was it. That was just rumors because he's going to the hey, Jets. Hey, after, after that Monday night game, the Jets had to do something. The yeah, Jets they did. Got, the Jets got hella desperate. Because they yeah. not, not, only, not only are they sitting in the third, they can become a second, but they also, they're going to they gonna take the rest of that contract. They're going to pay for it. A lot of people's sticking points was, they wanted the Raiders to eat half of that contract or eat some of that mm-hmm. contract. The Jets right. was like, nah, nah, we got this. <laughs> they was hella desperate. They mm-hmm. was desperate. I mean, hey, to each his own, I suppose. The only the only saving grace about our Saints uh you know, subpar performance on Sunday was that the Cowboys had an even worse performance. So that makes me happy. The Lions fucking diddied on all over them Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oil all over the place. I actually had a Cowboys fan that tried to check me before the game. He was tagging me on Facebook, tagging, tagging, tagging. And I was they like, should know by now. They should know by soon, now. As, soon, as the soon as the game, as soon as I was like, bro, this dude talking before they got a play. And then the, I saw the score of the Lions game. I was like, damn. Bro. I said, you're lucky. I said, you know how petty we is in the world. And you really want to talk? That was, that was, uh, damn, what's, what I, I'm trying to compare it to a movie scene. That was, that was uh, Damien, uh, or excuse me, Damon and Money Mike in the bathroom in Friday after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my boy, Damien. <laughs> like, what, 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 a phone book. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> No, Damien, I'm a boy. <laughs> don't, don't come on. Did you pee on me? <laughs> That's what that was. I like, like, just sit back, just let it happen. <laughs> That's what the Lions told the Cowboys. Like, all right, Dak, just let 100%, it happen. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, so that's the only saving the trick, part, the trick part was, I was in the kitchen, um, I was in the kitchen uh, making a uh, like making something for me and my pops, and I could and I heard them say because it was at the halftime back from Arlington, and I was like, "All right, cool." Then I heard an eruption from the crowd. I'm thinking, "Oh, Dallas must have did something." Come to find right. out, that was the Lions fans. I was like, "How the hell they sound like that at your house?" That's how the Saints were when we went in there and smashed them. But like we were louder than they were. Like that in your house. Mm-hmm. I could have swung them down. That was Dallas fans. Bro, that was Detroit people. I was like, ah, nah. Y'all have to get out of here. <laughs> man. Y'all should already know, man, how dirty them, them Detroit boys be. You know, shit. You got the city that, that gave us. We actually just... traveled pretty well. Come on, bro. The city that gave us Eminem and ICP, like, they ain't, they, sure, they're, they're not the most, uh, you know, uh, respectful, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nope, <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah. Well, before we get off, you know, continue. Uh, you know, just we just wanted to give a tidbit of football right there, since this is a part of a sports network. Uh, but uh, you know, we got to keep the lights on somehow. So, real quick, before we get into all of our wrestling news, we got to give a shout out to Planet Jerky. That's right, premium brisket beef jerky. The jerky that's on a whole other planet. Ooh, yeah. That's right. You can follow Planet Jerky on Instagram at Planet Jerky is their Instagram handle. And you can order directly from their official website at planetjerky.net. It's delicious. Take my word for it. I've actually, I know you hear this a lot of the times. You always see people on podcasts, hosts, always shilling product, claiming that they use it all the time or whatever. You know, like I can't trust that shit most of the time unless I actually physically see them using it. I have actually had uh, uh, I have actually had the product multiple times. It's delicious. 
It is so good. Like I said, my favorite flavor is the volcanic jalapeno. I gotta get me. I gotta get myself some. I gotta order some more. Go to PlanetJerky.net and order yourself. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. If you love beef jerky, it's low in sodium. It's high in protein. It's completely delicious. It's low in sugar. So, I mean, if you're on like a keto type of diet or, you know, some sort of uh, protein based diet, it's a nice little snack you would love to have, uh, you know, to kind of calm the cravings. You know what I'm saying? It's delicious. Check them out, guys. Go to planetjerky.net. And not only that, if you need uh, something special uh, for the, you know, the upcoming graduation, the upcoming wedding, if you're sending uh, your family's yearly Christmas, uh, you know, card, uh, slash photo, whatever, you know, whatever the special occasion may be, and you want to add that just little bit of extra to it, go to Seal the Deal Wax Seals and order yourself an official uh, awesome seal for uh, your envelopes or your packages, whatever. Um, seal the Deal Wax Seals is actually the product uh, from Mrs. Larry B. herself, Cecilia B. She's a co-host of the Sports Couple Perspective with the head honcho of IE Sports Radio, Larry B. So shout out to them. You can follow them on Instagram at uh, seal the deal underscore wax seals. And you can order directly from uh, the iSportsRadio.com official website. It's going to be iSportsRadio.com backslash seal the deal wax seals. Uh, like I said, don't take my word for it, guys. Check out uh, from our actual sponsors themselves. We'll be right back. Me and T5 are going to come right back and we're going to get into some wrestling news. We're going to talk about AEW Wrestle Dream or uh, Wrestle Wackness. Like I, that, that's my opinion, but whatever. I know T5 is usually more of a positive opinion of AEW than I am. So <laughs> it's, good, it's good to have T5 on the show now because months and months of me just talking shit. Yeah, I'm sure AEW fans are like, when is somebody gonna, when is somebody gonna talk positive about it? Well, here you go. I got you. I got your boy T5. T5 is gonna help y'all out. Okay. <laughs> we'll be right back in just a moment, guys. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with the IE Wrestling Show. Don't go anywhere. Hi, eSports Radio fans. This show is brought to you by Planet Jerky Premium Brisket Beef Jerky. Planet Jerky is the official jerky of the 2022 California League champion Lake Elsinore Storm, single-A affiliate of the San Diego Padres. This all-brisket jerky has gluten-free options, contains no MSG, no sodium nitrate, is low in sugar, and high in protein. Go to their website at planetjerky.net and follow them on Instagram at Planet Jerky. Planet Jerky, the jerky that's on a whole other planet. Sports radio fans, be sure to check out our sponsor, Seal the Deal Wax Seals by Cecilia B. You just finished your very own wedding or baby shower invitations and you're looking for that extra special touch? Maybe you just wrote a letter to a relative or a friend and you want to add to their smile when they receive it. Then seal the deal with Cecilia's handmade sealing wax stamps for your invitations, letters, and gifts. You bring the deal, we'll bring the seal. You can find them on Instagram at seal the deal underscore wax stamps and on Facebook, seal the deal wax seals. Last 10 years, IE Sports Radio has been bringing you amazing content ranging from interviewing legendary athletes, 
coaches, and other authorized media personnel to building tailor-made shows dedicated to all major sports cities around the country. Make sure to follow us at iSports Radio on X, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube to keep up with the latest in sports and with all of our shows. Also, make sure to check out our daily updated website at iesportsradio.com. At iesportsradio.com, you can see our daily show schedule and check out all of our show pages with personal bios to learn a little bit more about each of our awesome hosts. In addition to our show pages, you can catch the iSports Radio blog, Hall of Fame, Fans of the Month page, and our merchandise shop, including t-shirts, tank tops, caps, long sleeves, hoodies, and more. For now, over a decade here at iSports Radio, we've continued to be by the fans, for the fans, and we thank you all for your support and for making iSports Radio your direct feed for all the that is sports. Welcome back, y'all, to the IE Wrestling Show. Uh, it's T5 and your boy, the SoCal Saint, back at it again. We are going to get into some wrestling news in just a moment. But, again, I just want to do this uh, real quick. Uh, my little spiel for my little contest that I'm still in, if you recall. I've been doing this for the last few weeks. Your boy, the SoCal Saint, is uh, still in the running. I made it to the quarterfinals, guys, but I'm uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm, a little, I'm struggling a little bit right now, so I need all the help I can get. If, if y'all could just hit that link right here. Faceofhorror.org backslash 2024 backslash Martin dash Sandoval and just click that free vote daily for the next uh, seven days. Um, the end of this uh, quarterfinal competition will be on October 23rd. Excuse me, uh, October 23rd, I believe at around uh, 11 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. Uh, so depending on where you are in the United States, where you're voting, um, take uh, either add. Add, add an hour or shave off two hours. <laughs> and, uh, um, but yeah, I'm struggling right now, guys. I, I, I dropped from uh, from first to third to sixth to ninth. So I don't, man, these, this quarterfinal is no joke, bro. So if uh, if you guys could help uh, help a brother out, I would greatly appreciate it to try and make it to the semifinals. Again, go to faceofhorror.org backslash 2024 backslash Martin dash Sandoval, and I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm gonna toss people your way on the show, bro. I'm gonna mention uh, I'll mention it on Saturday. Oh, I appreciate it, dog. Thank you. Yeah, mention. Yeah, uh, guys, please do yourself a favor and check out T5 show, the Crescent City Connection, Saturdays at noon on IE Sports Radio. Man, uh, if you're a fan of uh, all things New Orleans uh, sports, T5 is your man. I, I, I promise you. Hey, I won't bore you with Northwestern football, no Western State. <laughs> I won't <laughs> we get we get into it. We talk Pelicans basketball, all Louisiana uh, colleges, you know the whole shebang. Not just saying stuff, but you know, and we we drag. Uh, hey, uh, hey, when you when you a local person, you can drag your state, you can drag your city, and trust me, we don't sugarcoat. I don't sugarcoat. We, we we drag them cats when we when we need to. <laughs> oh, man. So let's get into it, brother. We got some wrestling news. I know we talked about this before we went live on the air. Uh, so the PWI, I know we mentioned this uh, on the show uh, a couple weeks back. They had the men's top 500 wrestlers of the year, uh, and they just recently released the top 250 women's wrestlers, Pro Wrestling Illustrated's top 250 it, it would take us entirely too long to go through all 250. Ooh, uh, so good. But, uh, uh, I do want to make a quick little shout out. I actually uh, follow, uh, there's a local wrestling company here in uh, the DFW area. It's uh, the DFW Wrestling Academy, and they also wrestle under the name VIP Wrestling. Uh, for those who don't, this is going to be cool. Uh, you're going to love hearing this, uh, uh, T5. A lot of uh, big... Uh, WWE and AEW stars have come through those doors. Uh, in particular, um, Eric and Ivar, the War Raiders, uh, have been through there. Cody Rhodes has come through there. Uh, Cassius Ono, a.k.a. Chris Hero, has gone through oh, there. Yeah. Keith yeah. Lee, big man Keith Lee, uh, Limitless Keith Lee, used to be the former champion of VIP Wrestling. 
Uh, Shane Taylor of Ring of Honor uh, was a former champion. Homicide is a former champion. JTG of Crime Time is a former champion. Uh, Man, I mean, Loki has wrestled. I mean, they've had some big, big names come through there. And uh, they actually had one of their up-and-coming rookies, a – and this is really cool, especially with uh, National Indigenous uh, Peoples Day that just passed. A Native American uh, female wrestler uh, actually made the top 50 list. I think she made it at like 125 or something like that. I can't remember her name for, for the life of me, which is I'm terrible. I don't know why I brought it up. But I can't remember her name. So I apologize. Uh, <laughs> maybe I can find it here on a post real quick on Facebook because that's where I saw it. But I thought that was really cool to see that uh, DFW Wrestling Academy actually made uh, the list. Uh, with that, um, with that, uh, you know, with uh, with that, uh, with that particular wrestler. Oh, here it is. Oh, thank God, I found it. Actually, okay, so she's actually um, uh, 184. I apologize. Her name is Maya World. She was trained by Lou Gotti uh, Starrett. He is the head trainer and owner of the DFW Wrestling Academy, uh, and she's a native Texan and a Native American uh, wrestler. Uh, collected several singles championships uh, in the Lone Star State, as well as Mission Pro Tag Team Gold. Mission Pro, of course, is the company that is run by Thunder Rosa, uh, so that's cool. Um, and she has uh, worked uh, matches here and there for AEW and Ring of Honor, uh, you know, in little spot matches here and there. So that's really cool to see a local girl getting some recognition in a nationally recognized uh, wrestling magazine. So congrats to Maya World for making the uh, 250 women's uh women's uh, wrestlers list uh for pwy um but uh we're yeah, gonna do- uh, train with athena huh that's i heard she, i think she, i think i heard she had trained with athena yeah i think she had yeah because athena uh like her man athena her husband matthew palmer he owns the other uh independent wrestling company out here in dfw metroplex wrestling which is actually uh they man they do some good business they run weekly shows every single friday or saturday night um, consistently, um, and I think they sell out consistently. And Athena has actually made uh, some appearances there too. Um, and Matthew Palmer, I don't know if you, I don't know if you've heard of him before, but if you look him up, he's actually the guy who started a feud and wrestled uh, uh, Paul Walter Hauser from Cobra Kai uh, at yeah. a wrestling Palmer show. Yeah, that was the guy that Paul Walter wrestled. <laughs> is Matthew Palmer? I know that. Yeah. So, uh, well, let's get into it, man. Let's see if we agree with this uh, top 10 list uh, from PWI. At number 10, we just talked about her, uh, the reigning uh, Ring of Honor Women's uh, World Champion, Athena. Uh, I I mean, I guess, I mean, uh, she made the list. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I, I mean, she, I think she deserves to be in the top 10. I personally probably would have put her a little higher, but hey, at least she's in the Me top too. 10. You know? Yeah, I would have put her a little bit higher, man. Like her matches, uh, especially the championship matches, were real were lights out, dude. I mean, she's always been consistently good. I feel like that's she's definitely one of the biggest fumbles uh, in WWE. Um, you know, I don't. You know, I I personally I'll say this: she was definitely the one of the biggest fumbles of Vince McMahon's WWE because I feel like she would definitely have been pushed strong. Had she been there, if, if she's there now, you know, under the two under Triple H's booking, I think she would be booked very strongly. I think she could actually be a uh, one of the one of the stronger pushed uh, females because uh, um, I don't know. I just feel like uh, the you know Triple H is trying to get things back on track. You know, it, it's it's kind of hard when like you got over thirty years of the same. Bullshit over and over again. Yeah, you gotta you know? kind of deprogram the fans to what they watching yeah. and everything. Exactly. Um, I feel. Like, I mean, I feel like they're hitting their stride. I know. I mean, I got Shawn Michaels is definitely hitting his stride in NXT, man. With with the women, they they are cooking every week there. Like and the 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 main roster are, bro. Up a bit. You know what I mean? It's kind of like what what TNA was doing or Impact was doing for the longest. How to yeah. knock out. Were mm-hmm. like the strongest thing going on the show. That's kind of how like NXT is getting, where the women's definitely. division is like the strongest thing on the show. TNA TNA definitely has had a niche back in the day, like that made them se- that definitely separated them from the WWE. That actually brought I feel like brought more eyes to the product at that time. And it was either it was, I'm not gonna say either. It was definitely both. It was the, I would say it was the X division and their women's division were booked very strongly, and that definitely yeah. brought eyes. 
product. It, it kind of it was kind of reminiscent of WCW back in the day because WCW had the cruiserweight division, which was definitely different than what WWE was doing at the time. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's been bringing a lot of people to the show. Yeah, exactly. Um, at number nine, the current AEW Women's World Champion Mariah May. So I mean, I mean, I'd, I'd say that's warranted. I mean, I know she's the current champion, but I don't, I don't think she needed to be any higher than that. I think that's, I think that's accurate. I might, I might have even flip flopped them a little, like put Athena before her. Like, yeah, I would. Really starting, she's starting to get her stride a little. The, her matches are fire, hard hitting, and everything. But I think I would have put Athena before her because. She's still a new. She's still a new. She still has that new car smell on her. Right, you know, right. She, she's just now starting to get her footing without Tony Storm in the um, in the uh, in the, in the storyline. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's what I think. That's what Mariah May is missing is an as a some sort of story to go because it's like after the whole t- Tony thing, she's just kind of been like. Here and there, not really like having a few, like a like a few. Yeah, they, be because, because they've been hitting them, hitting a little bit to circling back to her relationship with Mina Shirakawa, and they're yeah. kind of they're kind of hitting towards that, and they're kind of hitting towards Tony Storm because she's still doing the Storm Zero as her yeah. finisher instead of doing the um the May Day, which is like the uh, the fireman's carry a uh, cutter. Right, so she's right, been right. doing this. She's still doing the Storm Zero. So, uh-huh. and number eight from AEW, uh, Willow Nightingale. She's like perpetually I think, over. I think Willow has gotten a lot better. I was very critical of Willow in the past. Uh, you know, I think like maybe like a year and a half ago, I remember couple of her matches, she just uh, – there was just a couple of spots where I was like, man, she did not protect her opponent like she should have been. Like, I think there was that spot where she did a, a power bomb off the stage through a table. I forgot who she had in her arms. I can't remember who it was, but I, I just remember that person crashing through, and it was crashing through the table, and I think Willow took the table more so than the opponent did, and she, like, hit the back of her head on the on the ground. Like I think I know what you're talking about. Table. Um, I don't. Do you remember who that was? I can't remember who it was, man. I don't uh, remember who it was. Um, uh, I think it was. I think it was one of the street fights. I think it might have been Penelope. I think it might have been Penelope Ford. I, I gotta look. I know what you're talking about. I, I remember now. I, I think it was. Um, about. I think it was a. Uh, oh my God! What is her name? Ruby. I think it was Ruby. I think that happened. The way she, the way she, she did it, it seemed like. She was sitting on the table. I know what you're talking exactly. about. Yeah, exactly. So, like, I thought that, I mean, like, I knew she was, like, very green at the time. So, I was trying to give her the benefit of the doubt, you know. But she's uh, she's gotten a lot better. Um, and I think number eight is a, is a, is a decent spot for Willow. Um, I think she is a, she's a, one of those uh, wrestlers that's, like, uh, uh, you know, it's, like, it's kind of hard to hate her. I, th- I don't think she could portray a heel because she's, she's just so cute and likable it's kind of it would be really difficult for me to see her like turn heel you know what i mean it's, she's just got that baby face aura you know what i mean um, yeah they would have to they would have to do a storyline where she was completely broken she would like, have to totally like, change like her her style she would have to change her entire look personality it would uh, all, yeah this, this is probably going to upset some people i'm not comparing her to, to her so to, in terms of like ability and talent, I'm just saying like if uh, it would have to be a Bailey situation, and that's what I'm about to say. Like Bailey was like I want, I want, yeah. Bailey was like the female John Cena at one time with her ponytail and the Bailey buddies and the whole spiel with the hugging and all that. Mm-hmm. And then Bailey had to take it a whole nother, you know, a whole fucking 360, not just 180. I mean Bailey like totally just. Fucking flip the script. She went completely yeah. left. <laughs> she went uh, right. <laughs> she changed her music. But she, she made changed it work, music. though. You know, she made it work. Yeah, she did. You know, she changed her whole demeanor, like everything about it. And now Bailey is in this new transition where she was healed for uh, a decent amount of time. She's now babyface again, but it's a different transition of a babyface. She didn't just like go back to being. Like she grew up. You know what I mean? So she she evolved, which is what you're supposed to do. You know, you don't right. want to rely on a crutch like an old gimmick. You know, what I mean, I'm sure 
fans would have been like, you know, elated, but I feel like the elation would have died down fairly quickly had she done that. So um, if, if Willow were ever to turn heel, that's what she's got to do. She's got to, it's got to be like an extreme change. It can't just be, uh, you know, it can't just be an extension of what she currently is. You know what I'm saying? Cause I don't think it'll be believable. It's got to be completely different, but I think she's doing really well. Um, uh, hopefully she gets an opportunity to compete for the actual women's world championship uh, at one point. I like her. I mean, hell, anytime we get some people of color in a prominent role in the wrestling world, I, I'm, I'm all for it. And Willow is, is, is uh, she's doing good. You know, she, she has, she has room to grow. So, I mean, Hey, maybe, uh, maybe within the next year or two, she'll be in the top five, but eight, eight, I think is a solid number for her. Uh, number seven, Bailey. Funny enough, Bailey from the WWE at number seven. Um, uh, I may have to actually agree with that because, uh, uh, I mean, I feel like her her title reign was kind of so so, but uh, even with that said, I thought her and uh, I, 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 Io Sky had the women's match of WrestleMania weekend. That was an awesome, awesome match. Like that, people sleep on that match. You don't hear people talking about that a lot, or that that match in particular. But they had a fantastic match uh, at WrestleMania uh, weekend. Um, and uh, Bailey winning the title from EO. Uh, the storyline buildup wasn't, uh, I mean, it, it was kind of so so as well, but I feel the match made up for it. You know what I mean? Uh, but I, I think that I think Bailey being at seven is warranted. What do you think, bro? Yeah, like, man, a lot of people know that the follow me know that Bailey is my weakness. <laughs> I love me some Bailey, hey, that BBL like, Bailey. Woo, <laughs> the Bailey cakes. Y'all chill out now, man. Y'all chill out with the Bailey cakes. Now I'm trying to, hey, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep my A1C down. Y'all chill out. Okay, let me let me take it. Let me take it one step further. Them Bailey beignets. <laughs> <laughs> Too much powder. Too much powder sugar, bro. Too much. Not but enough. Yeah, man. What you talking about, bro? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, when she won the Rumble, bro, I was feeling it. I was feeling it. Yeah, and yes, that was out, awesome. <laughs> They kind of pumped the brakes on her. They were promoting Cody more than they was promoting her. And when they went over to uh, Australia, you're like, okay, where's Bailey at? I'm like, yo, they, they kind of pumped the brakes on it. But they circled back around uh, for the for WrestleMania, and I like the build to it with damage control. Yeah. Especially when she was like, hey, you know, I speak Japanese. You know, I I know what y'all was saying, Bob. I was like, ooh, you can hear that in the crowd. Everybody was like, ooh, that was pretty dope. So I felt the build could have been better for with her. Like you said, I, I felt the build between her and EO could have been better. The match was like lights out. The the match was lights out, and her her title reign could have been better. She puts she like in the ring. She's a ring general. She puts in the work, man. So I think that, and then she's she's gotten better on the microphone as as a, a baby face. Like I said, um, when she had to evolve, she's not side pony Bailey no more. A lot of people was afraid that she was gonna go back to side pony Bailey. Like nah, man, she's an adult version of what she was before. She's evolved. So yeah, she's baby probably, face. Yeah, exactly. She's baby face, but she ain't gonna hug you though. She's not gonna hug you. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, like I said, that's a nice spot for Bailey. Uh, yeah, I think so. I, I would have to say that, that, that. Like I said, I think that's warranted for um, for the year that she's had so far. Um, so I, I don't, I don't see an issue with that uh, for her. Um, at number six, finally, we actually have the first uh, Japanese uh, women's wrestler on on the list, at least on the top ten, anyway. Uh, and I hope I'm saying this right, Sari, Sare. It's a Sare. S R E E three E's. Sari, Sare. It's, it's like an A. That's how you say it, Sare? From uh, from Marigold. Uh, so I. I, I can't I'll, I can't I can't speak uh, for for her honestly uh, uh, if she's warranted at that number or not because I haven't really caught uh, you know caught up completely with uh, the Japanese women's wrestlers 
Um, so I'm a little, I'm a little, uh, I'm a noob on that. So I'll admit that. But um, I don't, I know you follow Japanese wrestling. Yeah. So I mean, if yeah, you got, got some think, homies that, uh, I got some homies that keep up with, um, with Stardom and now Marigold. That's the new uh, kind of offshoot um, from, um, from the, uh, the former, uh, I think it's the former promoter, Booker. Yeah, yeah, that's that's that, um, I think yeah that's he, started, that. he started. He started his own joint, and uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. he tried to post. a couple of girls from Stardom, and that's and that's one of them. And uh, she's a beast, man. Like that's a, that's a good spot for her. Like I've seen a couple of uh, uh, her matches because I try to follow it as much as uh, much as possible, especially Stardom. And that's how I know uh, know about uh, Mariah and uh, Mina. And uh, and I went back and I was like, yeah, they had like a lot of girls that come out of Stardom that are fire, and that's what um I'm about to say Stephanie, that's where um Julia came from Stardom. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. I know what you're talking about now because that guy was uh, with Julia during WrestleMania weekend. He was in the crowd sitting with her and William Regal mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. Stan Liver. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, but yeah, uh, that's a good spot for Saray, man. She's put on some bangers. You know, in stardom and in Marigold, so I'm cool with it. Yeah, yo, shout out to the head honcho of Ice Sports Radio, Larry B, is in the chat room mm -hmm. watching us live. What up, brother? What's good, dog? Good to see you here, man. I hope you're enjoying the show so far, man. It's good to see you. Uh, number five. Let's see what number five is for the PWI 250. That is going to be, oh, my new favorite in WWE. And they even listed her as a part of WWE, even though she just barely debuted <laughs> in the company. Uh, but she had her first official match last night, which was awesome. Very, very strong debut for her. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Super talented. Uh, the Chilean superstar herself, Stephanie Vakir at number five. I think that's definitely warranted. Stephanie has had a strong year, um, uh, you know, internationally. Um, she had a great match uh, with, uh, you know, Mercedes Monet uh, at, um, oh, my God, what was the pay-per-view? Forbidden Door, which led to her, which, I mean, a lot of people speculate, which definitely led to her being put on the radar for WWE, and she made it known that that's where she wanted to go. I'm sure Tony Khan tried to make a bid for her, but she had already made up her mind, and that's why you see Stephanie uh, in uh, NXT right now under WWE's umbrella. And she, they got her associated with another huge star in Julia. And they got a big match already announced for Halloween Havoc, which uh, for the first time and in, a, in a long time, Halloween Havoc is going to be a, an actual premium live event and not just a, a two-week special on, uh, you know, on uh, NXT television. It's actually going to be its own standalone premium live event this year. And I think it's a – I don't think it's this Sunday. I think it's next Sunday. Uh, and that has been made official as of last night's NXT television. It'll be uh, the NXT Women's Champion Roxanne Perez and Cora Jade teaming up together, the former NXT uh, Women's Tag Team Champions back together to take on the team of Stephanie Vakir and Julia. So that's that's a big match. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. So I think I think it's warranted. Shout out to Stephanie Vakir um, at number five. I think that's uh, definitely, definitely uh, a good place for her on, on the uh, PW250. Or PWI 250, excuse me. Yeah, the, that's a that's one of these you love it when a plan comes together type situations. Like she went and did the uh, did the match at Forbidden Door, and that got eyes on. Not only that, that was the first time I heard of her, really and truly. So I went back and looked ahead, like like you know most of the internet cats do, and I was like, man, oh girl, been cooking for a minute. And they've been, they was putting her over, telling her about uh, some of her matches and everything. And they even had her wrestle, I believe it was on um, Dynamite and Rampage. And I was like, okay, all right. Oh, girl cooks. She can cook. She cook and hand out, uh, pass out plates. All right. And sure enough, I wasn't, me and the wrestling fans weren't the only ones watching. Old Papa Trips was watching too. And, they, and that, that was part of her plan. She was like, like like Mr. Burns, like excellent. <laughs> Cause like she she made she she said like from Jump Street as a little girl when she was watching wrestling, she always wanted to go to WWE. Mm. And what happened? You yeah, know, yeah. Everybody, hey, 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 
You look like 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 a old Hannibal on uh, A Team. You love it when a plan comes together, and <laughs> she she made that work, and here she is, and uh, she got her foot in the door now. She in NXT cooking, right. and uh, you can't well, wait to see her. Doing. Gen Zers out there, that's an old television show from the eighties. You can look it up online. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's your, hey, you may hey you may not like it, but your parents will love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So shout out, yeah, shout out to Stephanie Vaccaro. I think that's a good place for her, man, for sure. Um, now, man, we come to the down to the nitty gritty. Number four uh, in the top two hundred and fifty is going to be, uh, I think I'm saying this right, Micah from Stardom. Yeah, I believe that's I believe that's how I spell. I mean, uh, pronounced. Yeah, she's uh, she is at number four. Um, again, uh, I I, I uh, leave that off to you, brother. I know you're uh, you and your buddies are more of a. I mean, you try to keep up with all things Japanese wrestling. Like I said, I feel bad that I don't keep up as much with the women's side of it, which I need to. That's on my. That's uh, that's not me being misogynistic. So let's not cancel me. I just, <laughs> I just I haven't educated myself. Cuts oh, <laughs> my imaginary pearls. How dare you? My yeah, goodness! Uh, my goodness! Did you hear what he said? <laughs> please don't cancel me. <laughs> please don't cancel me, guys. Oh. I am appalled. T5, how, how could you associate with such a, such a ruffian? Yes, I know. I'm, I'm terrible. But, but yeah. So, I mean, I, is, is that a warranted position for her to be on the in the top uh, the top 10 uh, at number four? Yeah. Um, she can cook, man. Look, I, I'm more... I, Hey, I'm more of a Saray fan than hers. Okay, fair that's enough. Just personal, that's just personal preference. But uh, she, she, she's, she's put in the work, man. She's had some bangers over there, and uh, I forgot the name of the title. I still don't know the names of the titles. I'm not. I'm, I'm versed, but I'm not well versed. I'm not like. Actually, uh, that's the name of the. I'm not that dude yet. I'm not there yet. I know they right. have. Uh, don't they have a, a combo title that they share with New Japan? The one that um, Kyrie Sane held uh, before she came back yeah. to yeah. the uh, uh, IWGP Women's Championship, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah, so they have that title. That's that's a, it's kind of like held by both companies. But I know Stardom has their own like championship, and I know it's like shaped like a star. I just can't remember. I, wow. I'm like you. I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> like, um, I mean, shit, I'd, I'd take that star title over that fucking butterfly divas title from back in the day. That was some straight up My Little Pony type BS they tried to uh, pass uh, off. That was such an ugly title. That would hurt my oh, feelings God. having to wear that. Right? I know. All right, now we're down. Uh, we're down to the the top three, top three guys, top three, and I think this is actually pretty damn accurate uh, for for what it is. At number three, mommy, Rhea Ripley. Uh, Rhea had a very strong uh, beginning of the year. Uh, had a great match with Becky Lynch at WrestleMania 40, uh, and then the injury bug unfortunately hit her, and she was out for a decent chunk of the year. Came back. Began her program that she's still currently in with Liv Morgan. Had a very decent match with her at SummerSlam, um, where the the turn happened that we all saw coming with Dominic and Liv. Um, then uh, it's carried on to uh, them having a, a mixed tag match together with the Terra Twins and Judgment Day. And then we had the match at Bad Blood, where uh, Dom was inside of a shark cage, and now. Uh, I guess Raquel Gonzalez or Raquel Rodriguez, whatever you want to call her. I can't remember which name they, they settled on. They Raquel, a name of, uh, <laughs> she's now a part of, uh, I think technically she's like a pseudo member of the Judgment Day now because she's like Liv Morgan's diesel to her Shawn Michaels. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Rhea is now, um, you know, going at it with uh, with Raquel, I guess, to kind of ease, uh, ease it up on the whole Liv and the title uh, picture right now. But I don't, did you catch Raw this Monday? Did you see that nasty bump that Rhea took, unfortunately? Uh, oh, yeah, bro. Yeah, Rhea. I just barely watched it today. I didn't notice it the first time, but then I went back and looked at highlights. I was like, ooh, damn. Rhea, for those who didn't see it, Rhea took a big boot, I think it was, from uh, from Raquel. And then when she did her back bump you know, to the mat, 
she didn't realize that Tiffany Stratton's heel was laying right there, and man, Rhea took it full on on the back of her head. <laughs> like, damn! Like, I mean, she slammed right into Tiffany uh, uh, Tiffany Stratton's uh, heel right on the back of her head, and oh man, I bet that shit did not feel good. At least it wasn't the pointy part. It, the you know, what I mean, yeah. it was just it was the part where your foot goes into. But man, like, still, I'm sure that did not feel good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Man, like, uh, she, uh, I think she would have been a little higher on the list, but I think some of the Judgment Day stuff kind of dragged her down a little. Like, she was more like, she wasn't defending her title as much. And yeah. you seen her, you when she was still part of the Judgment Day, you seen her with Damien, you seen her with Dom, with Finn and all of them. And then yeah. you had the, um, the Liv Morgan stuff. Her trying to infiltrate and everything, and like you said, of course, you know she unfortunately got injured. But I think like the Judgment Day stuff, because she was more, she was mommy. She was you. You could tell she was kind of like the leader, de facto leader of Judgment Day, which was new to like right. wrestling period. But it was like she wasn't defending her title as much. She didn't have her own storyline as much. Like like you saw how. Um, you would have the Judgment Day, and then you would have Damian Priest have his own uh, uh, storyline with Gunter. But yeah. at this, but, you know, she didn't have. It was like Rhea Judgment Day, but you didn't have Rhea Side Quest. Yeah, her own storyline. It was just Rhea Judgment Day. So I felt like they kind of, you know, that kind of dragged her down a little. And that might have been why she, you know, is like at number three instead of like higher than that. Because yeah, she was perpetually yeah, over. Whether she was a hero or thing, she was perpetually over. So yeah. I feel like if, if it wasn't for that and the title defenses, she would have been a lot higher. Yeah, that's a fair assessment. I agree with that. Um, number two, I definitely agree with. I think you will as well, especially with the year that the company that she works for has had. And the run that she's having right now, and I think uh, big and better, th bigger and better things are in her future when her contract comes up. I think if uh, I think I, I honestly think that she's outgrown the company that she's in. I, it, I think it's just a matter of time before she ends up on the WWE stage. Uh, number two, the uh, current knockouts uh, women's world champion, Jordan Grace, the uh, thick mama pump. I think Man, that's I've been a fan of his for a long time, bro. Yeah, and uh, I've seen her like the ev her evolution from when she uh -huh. first started with when, when she first started with Impact to being with them with TNA to lead like ducking off all of it and coming back and then you know making a surprise appearance in the Rumble yep. and showing up on uh, and showing up on uh, in, I mean not on Impact NXT like mm -hmm. I've seen that evolution, man. And you know it's it's good to see her where she where she started from and where she is. And like you said, I think she's kind of done all she could in uh in impact. No knock on her and no fault of her own and no fault on them. But she's been there for a very long time, and she's been yeah. at the top, you know. And she, like I like I said, she's kind of outgrew that, you know. Now, if anything, you know her. I think her contract might be up like around January ish. It kind it of amended her, it. Yeah, it was, because it was gonna be, it was gonna be a little bit later than that, and I think they kind of amended it, you know, to help her out a little. Like, hey, you did, you did all this for us. Let, you know, if you, it is what it is, let's, you know, let us ride, you know, ride this this last yeah, yeah. thing. You know, kind of, kind of give her her nice send off because yeah. she did so much for them, and that's kind of classy. I like that. That's a classy thing to do. Like, hey, we understand. It's a business, and you helped us out so much, so we're going to give you this nice send-off and everything. We're going to amend the contract to where, you know, you can get out a little early and go, you know, do your thing. And I can see her uh, showing up for the next Rumble, and, you know, that's when she makes her debut debut. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like I said, man, she's had some banger matches, banger feuds and impact. She kept that – she had that – uh. That women's division, the knockouts division, cooking man. Her yeah. and Masha, that thing gonna cook. That thing mm -hmm. right there gonna cook. The last match they had, oh boy, mm -hmm. oh 
man. Dude, I mean, she's been. She's a. I, that's why I feel like uh, she's she's not long for TNA. I feel like she will eventually uh, once that contract's up. I I I I, I don't want to say I guarantee it, but I'm I'm strongly of the opinion that she's not gonna be in the company any longer. Because I mean, like, what else could she do? I mean, she's done it all already. Like, she's had such a strong run there. Um, it would just make sense for her career progression to 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 go to the next step, which would be to be on the the grand stage of of what is the WWE. I mean, like, uh, I feel like she, you know, she'll. End, I mean, WWE's NXT women's roster is already like just uh, above and beyond. I mean, hell, they finally revealed Delta. Delta is going to be showing up. Uh, rumor has it she'll be showing up at Halloween Havoc. They finally showed Delta's face. On that last uh, awesome, I don't know what those vignettes are, the way they've been showing her, but they've been fucking awesome. Like the way they're presenting Delta, it's like, damn, like she's gonna be a, she's gonna be a fucking factor in the women's division for sure. Um, and then you Man, got first time with her on the road yeah. and stuff, and everybody thought it was a dude. <laughs> I was like, right. no, no, who was that? Rewind. I had to rewind the TV and stuff. I was like, Man, hey, hey, oh, 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 who's that? Who's that? I said, Oh, that's probably Delta. Yeah, oh, I love how the, uh, Delta, especially she's from Australia, just like Rhea Ripley. I mean, uh, I re- I knew I knew right off the bat that that was her because uh, the the uh, it was just giving me Mad Max vibes. The whole vignette, you know, the whole yeah, me too. Uh, Post apocalyptic, uh, you know, uh, universe that it created for these vignettes. I, it was great. Uh, they've been great, every single one of them. And uh, I mean, she's gonna be a big deal. These vignettes is already building up. You know the steam, and uh, you know, I, and I, I just can't. I just I see that for Jordan in her future, unless they want to throw her like right into the main. I think roster Jordan game. pulls AJ. Yeah. I think J- I think Jordan's gonna pull an AJ and go straight to the main roster. Remember it's possible. Um, it's possible. How, how, he, how he pulled up on in the Rumble, and then he went straight to the main roster. I think Jordan's I think. gonna pull up. She gonna do the Rumble, and she gonna pull up to the main roster. I think uh, for Jordan's sake i mean uh i know i it, it i i'm 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 saying this with uh you know with uh <laughs> with some uh hesitance <laughs> but uh if you're gonna go to the wwe uh you know they have a wellness policy so that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> i'm just what gonna say, that. say sir what are you trying to infer sir huh well, <laughs> Let's just say her voice has gotten quite deep over the years. Okay. <laughs> hey, 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 where's where's Randall at? Hey, Mrs. Fenster, Mrs. Fenster. Okay, just get a. What you trying to it's... say? What you trying to say, bro? We out here making recess references and stuff. You out here what? snitching? What you what you trying to say, bro? Let's just say she needs to lay off them uh them them vitamins. Okay. <laughs> Let's just say she needs to lay off that pre-workout. You know what I'm saying? She's Mrs. she's Fenster, Mrs. Fenster, she's taking vitamins behind the bleachers. She's been taking a she's she's a when you're when you're when your voice is deeper and you're more muscular than your husband, I think you need to lay off that pre-workout. That's all I gotta say. Hey, 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 you need, hey, hey, we will not defame, we will not slander the Jonathan Gresham like this, Mr. Gresham's. We will not slander this. I am not slandering Jonathan Gray. I mean, it's it's not slander if it's true. <laughs> like, it's not slander if it's true. Shit. <laughs> like, uh, that's all I'm saying. So, mm, just hey, hey, my wife, <laughs> hey, my wife can crack a coconut with her legs and stuff, man. I don't know, man. I don't know how I feel, bro. I mean, she, she, she I mean, hey. Jordan could have did, did that before she got you know fucking you know he manned hey, out. So. Cool. Because man, cause she she's a bot. She's a professional bodybuilder on the side. She does the competitions and stuff. I don't know if she. I don't know if she's doing to what you're alluding to, but you know. Uh, I mean, women 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 don't usually sound like that if they ain't on the the vitamins. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying that. I don't know any. I don't know any that look like that. That sound like that. That aren't taken vitamins <laughs> okay that's all i'm saying i'm a fan of hers but let, let's just be real okay 
Hey, she, she has to she has to go to HR and read the contract. <laughs> yeah, she has uh, to read she has yeah, to read the fine yeah. print. Before she signs, she has to read the fine print. Yeah, oh, oh, I, be, cannot right. do this. Cannot do this. Cannot do this. Cannot do this. Or can I do this? Oh, okay, okay, okay. You must not have OF. You can't do this. <laughs> right. Jordan, uh, Triple H is going to be like, all right, Jordan, let's, uh, I need you to read this highlighted part, okay? Yeah. Uh, and I need you to, let's, uh, let's work on that, okay? <laughs> like, you know, uh, it's going to end up being like a masterpiece situation where, you know, uh, he get you know she's gonna end up looking a little deflated, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> hopefully not, but what we'll happened see. to her? Oh my God, what happened to her? <laughs> and uh, at number one, uh, let's get through this so we can move on to some of the other wrestling news. Uh, number one, I think it's definitely. Um, I think I can agree with this just based on the years she's had and like the the strange gimmick that she has. It seems to just be over. You know, with with uh, most uh, wrestling fans uh, out there, at number one, Tony Storm. Tony Storm is number one of the two hundred and fifty uh, PWI women's uh, list. I think that's definitely warranted. The fact that uh, Monet is nowhere near the top ten makes me happy because I think she's been fucking cringe all year long. I don't think she's done anything of note. Uh, she definitely hasn't turned the needle, so to speak. I think Tony Khan is definitely overpaying her. What he should do is give Tony Tony Storm a raise because she's actually been more entertaining in promos. She's been more entertaining in the ring. Um, her storyline with Mariah May leading into, um, you know, All In was fantastic. Uh, I think she's definitely warranted for being number one. So... Uh, I think that's actually a very strong choice for the PWI uh, top 250. I don't know. What do you think, bro? Man, when she first did the turn with this timeless uh, Tony character, dude, I was like, what the, bro? This is why you. And then when they started doing the whole black and white gimmick and stuff, I was like, bro, this is crazy. It had me. It had me howling all the time, dude. When she would do her backstage stuff with Renee, it had me howling all the time, bro. Chill out, tits up, and watch for the shoe. And she would go and take yeah. her, she would walk off camera and throw the shoe back at Renee. I was right. like, who threw the shoe? Bro, I was dying laughing, bro. And when she would do like the, um, the, uh, the uh post uh the post uh pay per view um media scrum and everything, and she called out Wendy Richter, but everybody thought she was talking about uh, Mercedes Monet, and she was right. talking, she said Wendy Richter, I'm gonna put you in the book. I was like, dog, she take <laughs> man, she she's wild, bro. Like her promos she's and stuff was wild. Her she matches with her gimmick, man. She certainly believes in her gimmick, which is good. I mean, like. It's got to be believable from the person portraying the gimmick, you know. So if you don't believe the story that you're telling and the character that you're portraying, nobody is going to believe it in terms of like you know your fan base. So I feel like uh, she's done, she's done very strong character development, which is so funny um, that it's it, it's that it's in a company that you know originally was trying to be more sports based than character driven, like their you know their competition, so to speak. And she's one of the stronger characters that they have on television right now. So it's so funny how that happens. And <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh no, you, you try the thing about it is you're able to mesh the sports aspect with the wrestling aspect because it's at the day at the end of the day, it's still pro wrestling. It's not yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, of course. It's not course. science. Course. You know, it's yeah, still yeah, pro yeah. wrestling. So of course you gotta have characters. You know, mm -hmm. folks gotta have you gotta have your dick heel. You gotta have your baby face, and you gotta have your your overachiever, um, uh, he, I mean, baby face or overachiever heel, and of course you gotta have your your Darby Allens. You gotta have your Tony Storms. You gotta have people that actually have some character, some substance to them, or you're not gonna watch. It's not just gonna be like, oh, this guy's an excellent wrestler. Let's see what he can do. Oh, this guy's an excellent wrestler, but they're. Their characters like dry as toast. 
You're not gonna right. want to watch that. You gotta you gotta have some aspect of storytelling to it. Yeah, you know, you don't want them to be lame like you know, like a Daniel Garcia or something with you know. Yeah, um, like now you you're finally starting to let him talk, and he's not. And yeah, hey, let him cook. And yeah, everybody, everybody. I'm glad they they separated him with from the that Jericho stuff, man. And go ahead on, let the man cook. He's a wrestler. Yeah, you see her. You see folks chatting. You're a wrestler. <laughs> I mean, I get that. I know he's a wrestler, but he's bland as fucking white toast. But whatever. I mean, to each his own. He may. He definitely makes me want to change the channel every time I see him. I don't. I don't see anything special about him whatsoever. The rest is one with him. See that. That's that. Once again, back to the uh, original discussion on having character. He's one of those dudes that, like, he was red death during Daniel Garcia. He needed something extra. He went and got recruited to the Jericho Appreciation Society, where he was, where Jericho was pushing sports, inter, well, sports entertainment. And that's where he started doing the dancing and everything like that and stuff, while, other, while the fans wanted him to be a wrestler. They didn't want him to do the dancing and the stuff like that. They wanted him to be a wrestler. So that's that's where he, that's where he started. That's where he started. His ideology started to clash a little, right? You know. So he's like I said. Now he's break broke away from that. Now he's starting to develop a personality. I mean, he's got to do something because I, I mean, I'm, I like I said to me, I'm I'm not a fan of his. Like I don't, I mean, I think his in his in ring work is. I, I'm not going to take away from his talent in the ring. I think his talent in the ring is solid. Like he's a solid hand, but I think that's all he is is just a solid hand. I don't really see any, any, like I really don't see any. I don't get it. I don't. I don't. I don't get Daniel Garcia. Like I'm not a. I'm not going to be a guy that would buy a Daniel Garcia T-shirt. You know what I'm saying? And I, mm-hmm. I've seen people comparing i don't know oh god i don't i don't understand what are these delusional fucking AEW fans somebody had the nerve to tweet a picture of him and jack perry like facing off against each other and then they're like this is like stone cold in the rock i was like what the fuck are y'all smoking y'all need to lay off that crack pipe okay there is no way that these guys are anywhere close to stone cold steve austin and the rock whatsoever Okay. That's doing that's doing too much, man. Yeah, hey, hey, too much. Hey. Okay. That's why I try to I try to stay off of the uh the um the the social the interwebs. Except for when I, I promote the shows. I try to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Cass, Cass I'm sitting there trying to I'm sitting there trying to do my due diligence, promote the shows and everything, promote IE wrestling, <laughs> and of course, and of course my show, and you just happen to come across some high foolishness every now and then. Yes. I've learned yes. I've learned to keep my mouth. Hey, mama always said if you don't have nothing nice to say, so I'm like, hmm, don't say nothing. Keep stay stay cool T. Don't say nothing. They, 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 they little children. They don't know no better. <laughs> Some of these are grown fifty year old men. But they, don't, they don't know no better either. They, they wasn't. Hey, they, they, they need to let them go oh. touch grass, chill out. <laughs> they need to do more than touch grass. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> touch, anyway. touch reality. I don't know. Get out. Get out the matrix. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> need the matrix or something. Oh man. Well, that that's it for the PWI top ten for the women's uh, 250 best wrestlers list of the year. Um, right, we're gonna take a quick little break. We're gonna come back with some uh, some Japanese wrestling news before we jump into some other stuff here. Uh, I mean, I know we've already been on the air a little bit over an hour, so we're gonna we're try we're gonna try and move things along. You know, we don't want to you know, take away too much time for your day. But if you guys are sticking with us, I love it. Thank you for sticking with the IE Wrestling Show. Uh, we're gonna hear from a couple from uh, a couple of our other shows here on the I Sports Radio platform, and then me and T Five will be right back with you in just a moment, guys. Stay tuned. Take care. We'll be right back. What's 
good, everyone? It's Drowski, the host of Part of Texas Sports on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. On this station, we cover everything in the Dallas Fort Worth, Texas area, from where we cover the Dallas Cowboys, the Dallas Stars, Dallas Mavericks, Dallas Wings, Texas Rangers, TCU, SMU, we cover it all right here every Wednesdays from 9 to 10 p.m. Central Time. Make sure you stay live with me on the Heart of Texas Sports on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. This is Ralph Galise, the host of the Injury Report on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all other sports. Are you that passionate die-on Steelers, Penguins, Pirates, or just a Pittsburgh sports fan? Then please join me on the Injury Report every Tuesday on IE Sports Radio, the direct feed for all other sports, and I will update you on all that's black and gold have you telling your Pittsburgh fans and friends what's up with Pittsburgh Squawks. Tune in Tuesday with me, Ralph Galise, the user report on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Let's go! Welcome back, y'all, to the IE Wrestling Show with T5 and your boy, the SoCal Saint. Uh, we just heard from two of the awesome shows here on the IE Sports Radio platform, the Heart of Texas Sports with It's Drewski and the Yinzer Report with my boy, Ralph Calise. Shout out to Ralph. Yeet! Got to give him a Mustard yeet. Mustard yellow. Mustard huh? yellow. That is not gold, sir. That is <laughs> mustard yellow. There is only one. And I keep saying this, one black and gold, and that is found in New Orleans. One. Mustard, you know, Heinz, one. mustard, you know, yellow, sir. Heinz, mustard, yellow. We the ones, right? Right, T5? We the ones. They not the ones. We the ones. That's right. We the ones. Put them ones in the air, y'all. <laughs> and uh, it's Drewski. Shout out to you, bro. I know you're probably having a hard, hard week, man. Like I said, the only thing that made our week a little bit better with that loss uh, to the Bucks was seeing the Cowboys just take that ass whooping, that can of whoop ass from the Detroit Lions. So sorry, it's Drewski. Hopefully you'll be able to make it through your episode of your show uh, without getting too emotional. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, I'm just hey, kidding. hey, just just think of it this way. Um. The Mavericks are coming back. Yeah, you got the Dallas Stars to look forward to. The Arlington Renegades. I mean, they're 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 all right. <laughs> yeah, you know. So silver lining. You got the Dallas Wings. They're 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 cool. <laughs> Anybody I'll take else? You one there you go. <laughs> oh man. Uh, all right, so we got some uh, some Japanese wrestling news. I know you're gonna love to hear this, brother. I know. I mean, you you are a big fan of Japanese wrestling. I myself, uh, uh, I'm I, I guess I, I have to admit I, I've become a so so fan over the over the years. Uh, ever since the uh, uh, you know with with the departing of a lot of uh, you know a lot of talent from there. I mean, a lot of big talent that I actually was like that made me start watching them have since gone on to different companies, yeah, either man. or or uh, or AEW. Uh, but I mean, they're still going strong. Um, this is some big news here. Uh, I know we talked about this a couple weeks back. They had the, the big event, the King of Wrestling show, uh, and uh, it happened. They actually pulled the trigger. Zach Saber Jr. is the new 
IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. He defeated Tetsuya Naito for the championship before Wrestle Kingdom. He cashed in, so to speak, his uh, G1 Climax tournament victory. Instead of having the match at Wrestle Kingdom like most traditional G1 Climax winners do, he wanted it early. He wanted it right away. He wanted it at the King of Wrestling, King of Pro Wrestling show that just took place a couple of weeks, or just I think it happened just this week. It was like Monday, Monday. Yeah, it was just past Monday. And there you go, Zach Saber Jr., considered one of the top technical wrestlers in the business today, has become the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. So, congrats to Zach Saber Jr. I think this very definitely warranted. Uh, Zach Saber Jr. only the second. Um, non-Japanese wrestler to win the G1 Climax. The first, of course, being the best bout machine, Kenny Omega. And Kenny Omega ended up uh, going on to eventually win the IWGP Heavyweight Championship, not at Wrestle Kingdom, but a few months later at Dominion of the same year. Uh, uh, but, I mean, Kenny Omega, um, his series with uh, with Okada uh, during their run together uh, in New Japan was, was legendary. Uh, and I mean, Zack Sabre Jr. is definitely going to bring a whole uh, a whole new technical era to uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. And I wonder what this is going to lead to. Will we get a rematch at Wrestle Kingdom with him and Naito? Uh, I, I mean, I wonder what's going to happen um, in the coming months. Because, uh, I mean, hell, it's already October. We're almost – this month is almost over. We're in the middle of the month. You got just a couple more months, and then Wrestle Kingdom, or is it Wrestle Dynasty? I can't remember which one, but I mean, I don't know if they rebranded it or not. But I mean, that that no, that's it's still the Wrestle Kingdom. Kingdom. I think they had. A, I think after his match, they had a couple of uh, a couple of people um, pull up. I think he might he might face Sonata next. I don't know if that's going to be at Wrestle Kingdom or if that's going to be um, at the next show. But they had a couple of dudes pull up. After his match with Naito, you know, everybody making a case to be the num- you know, next man up. And uh, right. he said, hey, I, you know, I'm going to go against Sonata next, and then we'll see what happens after that. So, yeah. So, shout uh, out to the homie, the Techers, Techers Unite, baby. We in here, man. Very congrats. Congrats to Zach Sabre Jr. Uh, becoming uh, the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. So, that's cool to see. Um, I think he's the first ever British wrestler to win that championship too, right? I don't think they've ever had a British uh, world champion in IWGP, as far as I, as far as I can recall. If yeah, because I, because I, I, yeah, because I don't think Osprey won it. So that would be no. Osprey did win it. Yeah, sorry, he would be the second. He's the Osprey second. Then. He's second. He's number two. Yeah, that's right. So he'd be number two. Yeah, sorry. Um, WWE. Um, uh, well, in a video that was uh, shown at the Pro Wrestling Noah show a couple days ago as well, WWE's Shinsuke Nakamura is returning to his uh, home country of Japan on January 1st for a Pro Wrestling Noah appearance. Uh, he actually uh, filmed a vignette announcing his return to Japan for a match on Pro Wrestling Noah. Uh, his opponent, I do not know, unfortunately. Um, a lot of people are saying they should just that WWE should just let him go and let him go back to Japan. But, I mean, Okada, excuse me, Okada, Nakamura has been very vocal saying he's happy with his position. You know, I mean, he loves living here in the United States because he loves where he lives. Excuse me, in Florida, his family, he said, loves uh, where they live. Um, And Nakamura is a big, he just seems like a big, like, passive dude. Like, he almost kind of, he kind of reminds me of, like, a, uh, Rob Van Dam, where he just like kind of goes with the flow, you know what I mean? And and uh, he, he just loves to, he's getting paid. He loves to surf. He can do that whenever he wants. So he's still wrestling. He's still, I know he hasn't been on television, but he's still wrestling at the house shows. He's, he's booked for the international tour. So it's not like he's not doing anything. I know he's not doing anything in terms of television wise, but he's still doing his thing. You know what I mean? So. I mean, for what it's worth, I mean, uh, I mean, if if he's content with that, you don't hear him vocalizing any frustration. And and Triple H has granted him this this chance to go to Pro Wrestling Noah to have a match on January first. Then I mean, more power to him, man. That's going to be a, a big that's a big get for Pro Wrestling Noah. So you know, my thing is always wrestlers first. You know what you what what, what they want, what their you know what their their machinations, what they want to do what their goals are and everything. And if, you know, Shinsuke is cool 
with the spot he's in and, you know, him, him and his family are happy. He's happy and healthy. And, you know, they're letting him, they're allowing him to go back to Japan and, you know, pay tribute and, you know, do these other things outside of WWE. And that's cool. You know, that's that's, you know, that's on him as yeah. fans. We're always going to want to see more because I remember oh, yeah. I remember when I first uh, started getting back into New Japan. That was one of the cats that pulled me in. Nakamura. Like, like, yeah. the, internet, the internet was just vibing on this guy. I'm like, who's this cat that keep calling him Swagski? Who's this? They keep calling him Swag. And he had like the Michael Jackson type aura. Mm. He had like this, this entrance. We would come like the Russell Kingdom. I'm like, I'm like, who is this dude? This dude Swagger is on 9,000. Like, you like, it's like Dragon Ball Z when, right. when you got it's the. All the uh, <laughs> boom, the, the scouter just explodes. That's that's how that's that's his swag level. I was like, "Who's this Japanese cat with the fire swag?" And that's what got me into New Japan. Back into New Japan, bro. And that was before. That was way before he went to WWE. I was like, "Oh, I know, yeah." This cat, this cat was in the Intercontinental in in Title. I mean, t- uh, champion. He rocked that thing. He brought it back to the white belt. He rocked that thing. I was like, you go. You, you rock that belt, boy. You do that. And he said, he sashayed, he sashayed down that long ass ramp to Wrestle Kingdom. I was like, you walk your, <laughs> you, you take your time. You take your time. And, and that brother, I've been riding with him. I've been riding with him ever since. So I'm one of these casters like, man, let my boy cook. Put him on TV, Papa H, and let him cook. So, you know, it is, you know, it is what it is. You're always gonna want more for your favorite dudes, but as long as he's happy and cool. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, I feel that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, if he's content, then let him be content. I mean, I'm sure something will come up when it does. I mean, I don't think I know Trip Triple H. I don't feel like I feel like Triple H isn't gonna just be like forget. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna want to recite. You know I mean? Like, I don't think he's gonna forget that he's in the company. Uh, but I mean, he's gonna, you know, he'll do something with him eventually. Oh man, we all we almost lost you there for a minute. Thank you, yeah, T5 we ben. Lost both of us. <laughs> yeah, Triple H, Triple H is listening. He's like, I don't like that shit. <laughs> no, nah, man, they heard they heard about my hot take, man. Oh, no, nah, no, nah. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. Hey, hey, Papa H, I was just tripped, I was just chilling, man. I'll be clowning. I got jokes. <laughs> oh man, this is this one is a this is a, some other big news. The last little bit of Japanese news here. Uh, I, I'm I, I don't know if you heard, but uh, not only will next year be the retirement tour of the franchise of the WWE, Mr. John Cena. Next year, as officially announced, that King of Pro Wrestling will also be the retirement tour of the Ace. Of New Japan Pro Wrestling, Hiroshi Tanahashi has announced that 2025 will be his last full year of wrestling. He will retire on Wrestle Kingdom in 2026, January 4th, 2026. And this is crazy because John Cena has said he will wrestle until the end of the year of 2025. So Cena and Tanahashi will be retiring within the same week. John Cena, December 31st of 2025. Tanahashi, January 4th, 2026. So we got two guys who are the franchise players for two very strong wrestling companies. Very distinct styles. These guys put company the companies on their backs. These guys are multiple-time world champions for those companies. These guys took their companies through the dark ages, so to speak, into new heights. And we are now living in an era where both of these guys will no longer be wrestling for these companies. Like, that's just crazy to me that we're going to get two big retirements on two very different sides of the world, two very vast different companies, uh, but definitely legends in their own right. Uh, I mean, it goes without saying. I mean, they for sure are legends in our own time, and they're both going to be hanging up the boots the same exact week. That's that's crazy. (laughs) Man, you ain't lying, man. I remember when uh, John Cena first came in, and this is, man, this is definitely going to date me. 
I remember when I used to play SmackDown, uh, and I used to, uh, and he was still, he had like the United States, uh, um, the, the, the Team USA jersey on and stuff. And I used to have to, I would, that's back when you can, you can swap people from the different rosters and everything. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Him yeah. Baby face. I would make him baby face, bro. I make, he was heels like as can be. And he was doing the word life. This is gangsta. This is, yeah. this is no, I was like, bro, yeah. I was, bro, I, I would make him baby face. I would put the Intercontinental Championship on him. I was like, man, we go, he gonna pick up Big Show today. Ah, right, let me, let me, let me, uh, let me fix this. Ah, right, let me fix this. No, 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 no. Let me fix this overall right fast. You know, he about to pick up Big Show today, bro. I, <laughs> bro, I, I was super, I was super John Cena, man. I was super John Cena, boy. And that was, man, that was my dude. I was like, hey, we about to we about to we about to catapult this dude today. Come to find out, I didn't have to. If I would have waited a couple of more years, Vince would Vince was gonna do it for me. <laughs> right, right. I mean, and the same with Tanahashi, like Tanahashi kind of came out of nowhere. Um, you know, doing you know the traditional way through the ranks of uh being a young boy, and then he yeah. just was like like it was at the same time, it was like uh New Japan like kind of has a tradition of where like they focus on like three or four guys and they let you know, like, these are the guys that are the future of the company. Three Musketeers. Yeah. yeah. Three Musketeers. Yeah. And at that time when Tanahashi came through, I think it was him, Okada and man, I can't and remember Shibata. who the other one was at the time. I think it was Shibata. Know. Yeah. Shibata. Yeah. Was Shibata, Okada and Han uh, Tanahashi. I mean, like, like those three right there are like, they're, they are, Japanese wrestling legends. I mean, like it goes without saying, you know, it's a, especially with the careers they have had over the years. Uh, but Tanahashi, man, he's just been like that franchise player. He's never strayed from New Japan. He was never lured away from New Japan like some other top talents have been. He's like the sting of New Japan Pro Wrestling because for all the time that Sting was in WCW, uh, WWE attempted to get him to come over and he never bit. On the on the on the forbidden apple, you know what I mean? Like he always stayed true to the company that made him a star. And Tanahashi was the same exact way. Um, and he he will he he started his career in New Japan. He's going to end it with New Japan. He's uh, the president of New Japan currently, and hopefully he'll take the company to to new and better heights once he gets to kind of just settle down in that office role full time, kind of like Triple H has done with WWE now. You know, so. Um, it's crazy to see that what we live, man. Like that's how you know we're getting older, man. A lot of the guys we grew up wrestling are are hanging up the boots. Tell now, me you know? about it. It's a, it's crazy that we're now living in that era now. Like we've gone through. I mean, uh, I'm 37 years old, man. Uh, uh, I, I mean, I mean, you I mean you are pretty close in age, right? Tifa, how old are you, bro? 42. Oh, you're 42. See, I mean, like it's only a couple, only a few years apart. So, I mean, we grew up through the golden era guys starting to slow down. And then the guys that we saw rise up have now either become part-timers or completely have finished. You know what I mean? The, the Stone Cold Steve Austin's, the Rocks, the Undertaker's, the the Mick Foley's, you know, uh, Shawn Michaels. I mean, oh, shit, we sat through, we went through two retirements with Shawn Michaels. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know how many damn retirements Ric Flair's I've seen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, they may go retire again just because... Right. I mean, we've seen a lot. We've seen a lot of legends come and go. Um, um, unfortunately, we've also seen a lot of legends pass on. And uh, it's it's been it's been just. Oh, man. I mean, life is fun. Time man. is life wild, is bro. Like, I remember, oh, man. I, remember is when, I remember when Randy Orton first started. Yeah. And he had, yeah, them, he had them yellow. He had them butter yellow and blue tights uh, shorts and stuff. Yeah. I remember he faced, and then he hurt his arm. And he would come every week, and they would do like a an injury report, a yeah, Randy yeah, Orton injury uh, yeah, report, Randy Orton, bubble, uh, a little bubble yeah, on the side of the screen, bro. Cody, I remember when Cody first started, yeah, dude. Me too. Yeah, me too. I remember. I, I got a story real quick. I'll tell you. Um, uh, me and my dad. Um, my very first wrestling event my dad ever took me to uh, is it was in Anaheim, California. Um, I've told this story many times here on the show, but uh, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll tell it for you for the first. Hopefully, this is your first time hearing it. But uh, uh, 
it was it was it was at the time known as the Arrowhead Pond. I don't even know what the hell it's called now. I think it's like the Honda Center or something like that. And uh, yeah. it was in the, the summer of 2000. It was sold out. This is a house show. This wasn't Raw, SmackDown, or a pay per view. This was in the peak of the Attitude Era, mid 2000. Rock was the WWF champion at the time. Triple H is is the guy he wrestled in the main event. I mean, this is prime time WWF at the time, and for a house show sold out from first seat in the first row all the way up to the fucking rafters. I mean, like we were in nosebleed section, but we had great seats and we got to enjoy the show. It was fantastic. I, I, that's one of my best memories I have with my dad. I, I love I love sharing the story just because of how happy I was at the time and and you know my dad just being right there with me and um uh we were leaving the arena and there had they had some local wrestlers because i i knew i was starting to get you know more you know enthralled with the wrestling world and i was starting and i knew about wrestling schools uh and there was a wrestling school in anaheim called upw ultimate pro wrestling and they had wrestlers from there Say, hey, hey, you know, they were inside the arena and outside the arena handing out flyers. So as we're walking uh, through the arena to, you know, to exit, um, there was this guy. He was a fucking monster. He was so fucking huge and, and just ripped. And he had blonde hair. He was shaved all the way around. And he just had hair on top of his head, just spiky like hair, almost like a horseshoe. And he handed out. He handed me a flyer, and I was just looking at this guy. I was just like, "God, this guy's a fucking monster! I'd never seen somebody so huge before in my life, especially not like right up close." And I kid you not, two years later, SmackDown, two thousand and two, summer of two thousand two, the beginning of the ruthless aggression era. Kurt Angle's open challenge. That same guy comes walking out, and it's John Cena. That guy that I met <laughs> handed me a flyer called himself the prototype at the, the prototype. time. Prototype, yeah. Met pre John Cena before he was John Cena before he was anything. He was just some guy handing out flyers trying to get people to come to his local wrestling show that he was training at. And it's just funny how life is sometimes. That I was like, holy shit, that guy that I just randomly just kind of like, holy, sh you know, just some random huge dude is now in the WWE two years later, wrestling Kurt Angle on a SmackDown. And I run to my dad. I was like, Dad, this is that guy. Remember? And my dad, like, he kind of had to think a minute. He's like, oh, yeah, that is that guy. And look at all. Here we are all these years later. And he's one of the biggest fucking names in entertainment, period. So, I mean, it's just crazy wild, how, life, how, life, how funny life is, man. <laughs> that, is, that is wild. Yeah, right? Isn't that crazy? You yeah, got a flyer uh, from Peacemaker. <laughs> yeah, I got yeah. I was handed I was handed a wrestling flyer from Peacemaker. <laughs> oh man! Uh, real quick uh, before we move on, uh, just this little tidbit. This is kind of discouraging. I hope there's not any truth to this, but uh, AJ Styles' return on SmackDown was cut short. It looked like AJ had a really bad injury uh, when he was wrestling Carmelo. It was Carmelo he was wrestling, right? Yeah, Carmelo Hayes on SmackDown. I think it was last Friday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, AJ Styles took to X and uh, put out a post um, he, in response to some fan that wrote uh, and tagged him in it. He, the fan wrote, I don't buy AJ Styles is actually injured. The whole thing is based on two people's word. Jackie Redman, who is clearly on WWE's payroll, and Dave Meltzer, who has proven himself as reliable as a discount condom from Dollar General, which is really funny. <laughs> and uh, and I'll, I'll another t another tidbit about Dave Meltzer here in a second. But uh, AJ actually responded to this uh, post and said, it's called a Liz Frank injury. Look it up. It sucks. I thought when I took off my boot, it would have been a bone. It would have been a bone sticking out of my foot. And then another person wrote him and said, that's the injury that ends running back seasons and took out Cam Newton back in 2016. And then he wrote in, in response, AJ wrote bingo as the kids say, dot, 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 I'm cooked. And now there's speculation that the injury, if this is legit, 
like that AJ's not, you know, bullshitting us. He's going to be out for a year. And it, that really sucks. And I think AJ is starting to contemplate, or at least people online are starting to contemplate that AJ is going to just hang it up, that his career is has come to an end. Because, I mean, he is in the twilight of his career now. He's in his early 40s. He said he wasn't planning on re-signing with WWE once this contract that he's currently under ends. I mean, which, I mean, he deserves to hang up the boots. Uh, I mean, AJ has had such a crazy, awesome career over the years. He was the franchise of TNA at one time. He made the move when he felt like he wasn't getting the respect that he deserved from the company that he helped build and made a new name for himself, an even bigger name for himself when he went to New Japan, became the leader of Bullet Club, became the IWGP World Champion on two occasions, and then he, that put him on WWE's radar, and he had, I would say, one of the best rookie years in, in WWE, uh, maybe since Kurt Angle, because, I mean, within just, what, maybe six or seven months of that run, he became the WWE Champion. You know, a former TNA world champion becoming the WWE champion in, in, in less than a year. Uh, I mean, that especially under Vince McMahon, that, that's definitely unheard of. You know, I mean, you didn't see any other TNA, uh, uh, you know, cast offs or whatever you want to call it doing that, you know, at that time. But AJ was just so damn good. He could not be denied. You know what I mean? Um, he truly is what his nickname is. He's phenomenal. He's one of the best wrestlers uh, of today's era for sure. Um, so, I mean, that's really unfortunate to see if his career is indeed over, man. It just sucks that it, it – hopefully AJ can come back and actually have his uh, his fair – have a proper send-off, have a proper farewell, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. I, I heard about that uh, yesterday, and I was like, ugh. He said, he said he felt like the bone would probably be sticking out of his foot when he took off his boot. I was like, ugh. Right, oh, yeah. No, I was like, yeah, yeah. Um, I was like, man, he gonna be out for a minute. And right. uh, when they when they said that that's like the type of injury that you know ends like running back's career, I was like, yeah, he do like a lot of jumping and his move set and everything. I was mm -hmm. like, man, um, and it was like such an awkward way that he landed too. You know what I mean? Yeah, like you said, he was uh, talking about you know winding down. He was he was kind of like on a part time ish ish schedule. Right, yeah, he already was yeah. kind of winding down, you know? Yeah, so I could, man, like, like you said, I hope he gets a chance to, you know, get that, you know, last run or everything and probably, you know, put somebody over on the way out or or get at least get the act, you know, the, the you know, get, the, the, get his flowers on the way out. Right. You know what I would like to see, man? I'm going to just put this out in the universe. I'm going to speak it out into the universe, so I hope it's, it comes true. If if it does take him a year, hopefully maybe less, to come back from that injury, uh, he would still be within the window to have one last round with John Cena. Oh, that would be dope because that's the cat. Like he kind of made his his bones on. He came yep. in and he said, "You know, this is the house. You know, this is you know this is, house, you know, this is my show." Then he turned around and right. said, "That's the house that AJ. Yeah, that's my house now." Right. So I and, remember, I remember uh, that. I was, they they have never had a bad match. SummerSlam, what twenty sixteen was fucking awesome. Him and him and Cena had a they had the best probably the best match of the year that year. And then the following January at the Royal Rumble for the WWE title, that match lived up to the hype. Uh, I mean, Cena went over on that on that occasion. But I uh, I mean, that's when that's when John Cena started pulling out that springboard bulldog, and everybody was like, "What the hell? Where right? the hell did that come from?" No, I mean, <laughs> Cena, Cena has never been, you know, the greatest wrestler, but I'll tell you this. There's more, there's more fucking awesome John Cena matches than there are bad ones. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, John yeah, Cena. Not, yeah, he's not going to pull up like everybody jokes about the five moves of doom and everything. But right. He's not, you, he's not going to pull out these, these, these. Top 100, you know, move list on YouTube or anything, but he's gonna have a top 100 matches though. You're gonna yeah. be like, oh, whatever. remember that time he faced CM Punk? Remember that time he faced he faced Kurt? Eh? Remember that time he faced AJ Styles? You're gonna have All a right. top list like that. You know, yeah. 
you know what match mm-hmm. I'm talking about. Oh, you know what match I'm talking about, like that. Most definitely, most definitely. Um, just a little tidbit uh, before we take another quick little break. I know we're going to be winding down here in a minute. We got, you know, we're almost at the two hour mark. But uh, uh, that little that little uh, jab that that guy took at Dave Meltzer is on fucking point, especially because Dave Meltzer had to open his big fat lying ass mouth and come up with some came with some story that directly pulled right out of his ass about the rock not working WrestleMania and uh, uh next year that uh he's like he's already given his uh he's already told WWE that he's not going to be wrestling he's already told them I don't think anything's changed if I if something changed I'll hear about it but he's already given them notice that he's not competing at WrestleMania so you know it is what it is and then somebody took to Instagram, I think, or X, one of those two, and actually wrote The Rock. was like, say it ain't so that you're not wrestling at WrestleMania. Is that true? And Rock, being the final boss that he is, laid the <laughs> smack down on Dave Meltzer's candy ass and said, that is bullshit. Don't believe it. Which is like, yes, thank you, Rock. Thank you for putting it out there that Dave Meltzer is the biggest – lying piece of shit in the IWZP, uh, IWC that there is. He is, the, he is the fucking toxic among toxic podcasters, quote-unquote wrestling journalists that there is out there. Nothing he says, that nothing that comes out of his mouth is fucking true. He, I don't know why people pay this man $14, $15, $20 a month to listen to just pure and utter nonsense. <laughs> but... It, it, you know, I love that The Rock fucking just lays down on his Rudy Poo candy ass with that just, you know, just letting everybody know, like, don't believe that it's bullshit, okay? So Dave Meltzer, and then Dave Meltzer tried to backtrack it. He's like, well, I guess something must have changed. Like, shut the fuck up, Dave. Nothing changed. You just didn't have any fucking clue because you don't have a clue. You have no clue, okay? Hey, hey, I'm going to play I'm gonna play devil's advocate on this one. Maybe his no. His there's, inside, no double, I'm maybe sorry, his, there's no double. There's no double advocate. His inside, maybe his inside source don't know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> He's like, inside, hey, and you mean his hey. asshole? Because that's where he pulled that story from. His <laughs> asshole is always wrong. Okay. <laughs> like, you know, all no. these cats have inside snitches, man. They all uh, got inside snitches, and this in I, within I, I, the I, company, I, within I, the I, company. Yeah. I highly doubt anybody from the WWE would ever give that guy the time of day, especially since he's far up Tony Khan's ass. He could see what he had for breakfast this morning. Okay. Like Dave Meltzer. I don't know know about that, man. That man has some hot takes on him, too. Everybody be catching strays from old Dave. Like at first he was at first he was real cool with them, but then he started catching a couple of strays, man. But at the but you know, like I said. Somebody, somebody figured hey, I could take this old weirdo for some money. I'm gonna let him make him think. <laughs> right. Somebody backstage at at, 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 uh, at uh, WWE is making some money off of him. He's like, "Hey, I'll be your backstage dude if you pay me, bird." <laughs> hey, hey, maybe who knows? Maybe. Hey, 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 say, Dave. Word on the street is, don't tell <laughs> nobody I told you, but The Rock not gonna be there for WrestleMania. Shh. Mom's the word. Don't tell me. <laughs> uh-huh. Make sure you got my routing number correct when you send that pay. When you say you send that money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh man, you big uh, dummy. We don't, we, don't got, we don't got much time left, but we're gonna take another quick little break. We'll hear from another one of our affiliates here at iSports Radio. When we come back, I want to, you know, I want to talk about the Bound for Glory card. Uh, TNA has been on a hot streak lately. They've been having sellout after sellout after sellout. And uh, I feel like uh, Bound for Glory is going to be another one. They have a very strong card. And uh, I'm actually looking forward to uh, watching it. And I I think I found a way to be able to watch it. And I'll actually uh, uh, relay that that info to y'all here when we come back in just a moment. Stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the IE Wrestling Show in just a quick moment. Hello. 
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Davidson. It's your boy, Latarius Lock. And we are the hosts of Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio, where we discuss everything in the world of basketball from prep to the pros. You guys should definitely check us out, man. Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We got all the basketball information you guys need. So we look forward to you guys listening in. And please do, because we are the best basketball show on this side of the Mississippi. And please do check us out on Twitter at Fast Break ISR. D Lock. Where's our time again? 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. That gives you guys spending time on a Sunday. Tune in. Sports fans, it's me, your boy Larry B, and I want to walk you through the world of sports. No, 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 not just the mainstream major TV deal type sports, although those are important too, but let me be your guide to your journey of all sports, from college to the pros, the minors, and everything in between. Each week, we are talking sports galore with true diehards just like you from a hardcore fan's perspective that's sure to quench your thirst around leagues you may know all too well and some you may even discover here. That's right, sports fans. If you love sports of all kinds, enjoy hearing amazing sports stories and respect all sports because you know how difficult any of them can be to play or compete in, then this is your show. Join me, your boy Larry B, on the defining moment each week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports, and let the sports come to you. Welcome back, IE Sports Radio crew it, and uh, fans. It's your boy, the SoCal Saint, and T5. We're back with the IE Wrestling Show. Thank you all for sticking with us. Uh, it's been an awesome, awesome day. Me and T5 have been really getting into some in-depth discussions, especially when we came to the uh, top 10 of the PWI Women's 250 list. Uh, we you know, we went some over some Japanese wrestling news, um, you know, making our opinions known about, you know, certain – journalists <laughs> anyway uh but uh, right now i just want to uh, before we end uh, today's show i want to uh, get into uh tna bound for glory is going to be live saturday october 26 so that's uh, not this coming weekend it's actually next weekend um and uh, i have uh, i'll get uh, the location here in just a moment but i wanted to say this if you are wanting to see tna's uh you know their wrestlemania like i mean um you know, it was their version of WrestleMania. You know, WCW had Starcade, ECW had November to Remember. Uh, WWE, of course, has WrestleMania, uh, and TNA's version of that sim- uh, their similar event would be Bound for Glory. It's always been the marquee event of the year for TNA, and uh, a lot of the biggest matches have, have taken place at at Bound for Glory. Sting and Jeff Jarrett for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Sting and Kurt Angle at uh, Bound for Glory 2007. I mean, they've had some big, big matches at uh, at TNA Bound for Glory over the years. And if you want to see TNA Bound for Glory uh, without paying, you know, uh, an absorbent amount of money and actually, uh, you know, maybe uh, introduce yourself to more of the TNA product, maybe go back on, uh, you know, some of their uh, library and get, uh, you know, a couple of... Uh, other uh, little events before the new year starts. They actually are running an awesome offer for their app, the TNA Plus app, uh, for those who don't know. You can get all access to the TNA Plus app along with this year's Bound for Glory included in that plan uh, with the uh, World Champion Annual End of Season discount plan. There's no code needed right now. It is at a discount of 85%. 
That's insane because re normally the annual price for this is $220, but you can get it right now. You can sign up all the way up until the day of Bound for Glory, October 26th, for a mere $35. And it, you can have it for, for, you know, for the next like three, four months. Uh, I think it automatically renews in January. So, I mean, if you don't want to shell out that $220 for the year, you can cancel it and it won't charge your card anything. Uh, so for thirty-five dollars, you can you can subscribe to the highest plan that they have for the TNA Plus app, and it will include Bound for Glory twenty twenty-four. So that, I mean that's pretty cool, right? Uh, T five. Man, that's, that's what's up, bro. I gotta, gotta, I gotta jump on that. Hell yeah, I'm thinking about subscribing, and then like I said, just canceling before the, <laughs> before before the new year hits. Uh, I mean that that's that's a really cheap deal, man. Especially as 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 a uh, as much as it is. You know, normally for the year, uh, I mean, that's that's. I think it's really good that you can subscribe for a lot cheaper, and that's even thirty five dollars to watch a, a one of the bigger pay per view events of the year. That's actually cheaper than what it costs you for an AEW pay per view right now, because AEW pay per views are usually fifty, sixty bucks a pop, and when you can yeah, just pay about $39, yeah. yeah, you know, you can just pay thirty five bucks for an app, and you can get the full TNA library plus the the biggest uh their biggest pay-per-view of the year upcoming you know what i mean um i think that that's that's a good deal man for those who are interested in in seeing uh, bound for glory so bound for glory if you can't actually if you if you're not going to watch it um over over a stream or, or on tna plus if you're going to be in the detroit era area excuse me that is where uh, bound for glory 2024 will emanate from the wayne state fieldhouse in detroit michigan uh, I remember one of the one of the better TNA um, uh, Bound for Glory events actually took place in Detroit. Uh, I think that was the year that Jeff Jarrett uh, defended the NWA World Title against Sting. I believe that was in Detroit, but yes, it was because that show also had a really awesome uh, uh, undercard match between Christian Cage and Rhino, and that was an eight mile street fight. I remember that. That was a that was one of the better matches on the card. There was also the Monsters Ball match with Raven, Brother Runt, a.k.a. Little Spike Dudley, Abyss, and the Samoan Submission Machine, Samoa Joe. Man, I'm really dating myself with the, <laughs> that, that roster. <laughs> but, right? But, man, it was a, that, that, that's a, that was a good show. Also, one of the best tag team matches ever took place on that card. It was a, a steel cage match for the NWA World Tag Team Titles. AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels defended the tag team titles against LAX, Homicide, and Hernandez. That was a fucking awesome match. Uh, TNA, uh, TNA uh, Bound for Glory 2006 is probably one of my favorite uh, pay-per-view events uh, out there, um, the, at least the ones that they've put on. And I feel like uh, this next card, uh, this upcoming card, is pretty damn strong. I don't know if they're going to add any more matches because currently right now it's only sitting at five matches. They do have another week. So who knows? They could add another one or two matches. Uh, but right now, the card is very, very strong, even for just five matches. Uh, you actually alluded to this earlier whenever we were discussing the PWI Women's 250, uh, the TNA Knockouts uh, Women's World Championship match has been announced for this, Bound for Glory. Jordan Grace defends the title against Masa Slamovich. I'm really looking forward to this match, man. Uh, do you think uh, Masa, uh, Masha is going to take the title off of Jordan, especially with her contract coming up in the next couple months? I think so. I think she's going to uh, put Masha over. They've been letting her talk a lot more. And, uh, like, there's a lot they, they weren't doing before. Um, I think they may have her go over. Like, the last time they they, they, they uh, scrapped, it was it was a Donnie Brook Pierce Sixer. 100% beef sirloin slobber knocker. Them ladies went to town. And I think uh I think Jordan might uh you know do some good business, you know, on the way out and uh put old girl over, put old Masha over cuz like Masha's been killing. It. Folks have been waiting there. as much as they love to kill her and Killer Kelly together, they want to see her do some solo stuff. Like yeah. they seen her, they seen her on the indies and GCW and stuff, and they're like, "Oh, we want that Masha, that right mm -hmm. there." That's what we want. So I think they may they may uh put her over on this one. I think so. I think Masha is, is the perfect uh, candidate to end uh, Jordan's uh, 
very strong title reign, and it will definitely take uh, their knockouts division to the next level. I mean, they just re- you know they just recently debuted the former uh, WWE superstar Zaya Lee is now a part of the company, so that's cool to see. Um, Zaya is getting an opportunity, um, you know, to still compete in the world of professional wrestling. I think she's a, uh, I think she's she's got a good head on her shoulders. I think she has a, a good opportunity to grow as a competitor, and maybe we'll see her one day compete for that same title. Um, they got Rosemary still under contract. Um, uh, you know, they got Alicia Edwards. I mean, they they have a pretty strong women's roster. So, I mean, even if Jordan does eventually, if she does eventually make the move to WWE, that a lot of people are already speculating that she will. I don't think TNA will be hurting. I think they they have a strong base uh, to, that she can leave behind. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, next match on the card. I'm I'm looking forward to this. I didn't. I I saw that this one was recently announced uh, after uh, one of the last episodes of Impact. Uh, this should actually be a pretty good match. Uh, former uh, TNA World Champion Moose goes one on one with Mike Santana. That's a, you know it's a little conflict in styles, but I think they, these guys could have a have a pretty good match. Um, maybe there's some implications where uh, uh, one of these guys will get a future world title match uh, at some point. It would be nice to see uh, Mike uh, Santana uh, possibly uh, get a push, uh, maybe starting with a strong win over a former world champion. Who knows? I mean, but I think I'm looking forward to that match as well. I think that'll be a good match. What do you think? I like what they've been doing with Mike Santana um, since he came over. Uh, they've been pushing him pretty, pretty good. Moose, I like Moose in the system, man. I like what they would do. Hey, you're supposed to not like them, <laughs> you know? So, right. man, uh, I could see Mike getting uh, getting the, uh, the push, getting the win, and probably getting, you know, elevated into that, that championship pitcher, the main event pitcher. Yeah. I can see that. That's what I'm. That's what I'm hoping for. Anyway, that's my prediction. I would like to see uh, Mike get the push and move up in the ranks, and hopefully be considered a top contender for, uh, you know, for the world championship uh, somewhere down the line. Uh, especially with the victory over Moose, um, if that's to if that's to be the case. Uh, this one, uh, I've never seen. I've never seen that they've done this as a one on one match before. So this will be interesting to see, unless they add people to the match uh, here in the next uh, couple weeks or so. But right now, it's sitting as a one-on-one match, Monsters Ball match for both the TNA Digital Media Championship and the International Heavyweight Wrestling Championship. PCO defends his titles against the indie god himself, Matt Cardona. So you know this is going to be crazy, especially with PCO involved. This guy has, has wrestled with popping his shoulder back into his place. I mean, he's been stapled. He's been put through tables. He's been, I mean, I don't know how PCO does the things he does at his age at this time in the world of wrestling. And then you got Matt Cardona, the self-professed king of the death match, you know, with his run that he had in GCW that reinvented himself. You know, Zack Ryder is dead, and Matt Cardona continues to remind us of that. And uh, this could puzzle, This could be a, a big... Uh, a big surprise, uh, entertaining match here between these two guys. Man, this match could be super fun. Like, I don't, like you said, I don't know how the hell PCO manages to do it at his age, bro. He's like wild, right? And, uh, Matt Cardona is like crazy entertaining, and they in like TNA's like monster ball matches and the digital media matches where they pull out like you know laptops and. And computer screens and stuff. Right. <laughs> Wild man, I'm 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 a, I'm a, hey, hey, I'm 100 here for it. You know, it would be funny. Like, I, I fuck. I hope I'm not speaking this into the universe. And Matt hears this idea, but you know how like uh, these type of matches somehow somebody always brings out like a bag of like thumbtacks or something. What would be really funny to see, and not if not thumbtacks with uh, with Matt Cardona being such a well known collector of action figures what if he pulls out a bag of action figures and does a spot slamming PCO <laughs> into action figures i think that'd be really funny to see <laughs> the little micro men's the little micro yeah. men's the bag of bag yeah. of that would be so funny to see like yeah those micro brawlers from uh, pro wrestling tees <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean that'd be really funny oh man 
I hope I didn't just give Matt Cardona an idea. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, this match, uh, I'm also looking forward to, but I pray and hope that two of the guys involved in this match don't do too many overly crazy things, especially at their age uh, with, you know, with their recent history. Um, full metal mayhem three-way match for the TNA World Tag Team titles. The system, Brian Myers and Eddie Edwards defend the tag team titles against ABC, Ace Austin, and Chris Bay. And the people I was just speaking about, the Hardys, Matt and Jeff Hardy. I definitely... I'm interested in this match because of what it is, but damn, I don't want to see Matt and Jeff doing too much crazy shit at their age, especially Jeff, man. Like, it's just, they're not, oh, man, I'm kind of conflicted, bro. <laughs> I just don't want to see these guys just get, you know, like, I don't want to see them get stretched out, man. I mean, they're not young cats anymore. I think man. Matt is too good for a reason because he's like, we, if, if, like every time I hear like stories from uh from the, their run in WWE, even AEW, they uh he's usually the one that plans these matches out. He's like the scientific one that plan plans the matches out. Okay. And Jeff's like Jeff's like the soldier. He's like, okay, cool. Where do you want me to be at? Where do you want me to do? Where do you want me to be at? So hopefully, Matt is the voice of reason, and he's able to rein Jeff in, get a good That's spot in here, there, you know, and. And everybody make it out all right. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm hoping too, man. That's what I'm hoping for. Hopefully, Matt reigns in his brother, and they don't do leave leave the crazy, the real crazy spots to the young guys. Leave it for like ABC and and the system to do. You know what I mean? And even the system's not any; they're not spring chickens <laughs> either. But still, you know what I mean? Yeah, they're young. Yeah, you leave that. You leave that for ABC, man. Like right. They do. They do. They do like the uh, the the high flying stuff, man. You leave that. Yeah. Deal. Let ABC handle that. Uh, but that'll definitely be another highlight of the show for sure, man. Uh, but, man, the main event. Who Do you think they'll pull the trigger, man, in the main event? The TNA World Championship. Nick Nemeth defends the TNA World title against the man that everybody believes in. Joe Hendry. Joe Hendry challenges Nick Nemeth for the TNA World Championship in the main event at Bound for Glory. Do they pull the trigger and give that TNA world title to Joe Hendry? Yes or no? I think they should. Will they? I hope so. Should they? Yeah. Uh, like he had a nice build to it. And I think this can kind of lead to a, a Nick Nimick heel turn, like post, post uh, Bound for Glory. Um, I'm here for it. I think they should. I hope they do. I think it, I think it goes without saying. Like I, I mean, Joe Hendry is one of the most popular wrestlers uh, in the industry right now. Um, his T-shirts are selling out. He is a viral sensation, especially on ter in terms of WWE. He has one of the highest uh, viewed social media videos of WWE, and he's not even a contracted wrestler for WWE. That's a that's that in itself is a feat that that not any that no one can say. You know what I mean? Like, when when's the last time that somebody not under WWE contract broke a record like that? No one. And he his his his. I mean, his whole aura. I mean, he's talented. I mean, he's not just a one note. You know, a one trick pony. You know what I mean? Like he he has the talent to back it up. Joe Hendry has been plying his trade for quite some time, and it's finally paying off. You know what I mean? Uh, like the great Macho Man Randy Savage once said. Cream always rises to the top. Yeah. And finally, Joe Hendry's has finally risen to the top of the industry and especially in TNA. And I feel like it would be a huge, huge missed opportunity if they do not give him a run with the world championship. So, yeah, I 100% agree, man. Like, um, I, I remember when he was in Ring of Honor, uh, like, uh before TK uh bought it and um he was it was like I think pre-pan no it was like around the pandemic I think um he was stuck overseas like he was he was supposed to yeah. be coming over to, to uh to the States and you know and, and get a run in Ring of Honor and he was stuck overseas man he was still putting in matches that, yeah. he was still putting in matches 
He was still doing, you know, viral stuff. He was still applying his craft. And then when he finally did get a chance to come over, he was super over. He was doing some of that stuff. He was doing some stuff with Dan Housen. He was doing a lot of stuff that was like, like, right. like really I good. And that's, I'm a and that's I'm when I'm myself here, bro. I remember Joe Hendry. Uh, do you remember um, what culture wrestling when they had their own little company? Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember Joe Hendry from that. You know what I mean? Like that was the first time I ever saw Joe Hendry, and yeah. then and and I, I you know I've been trying to keep my eye on him you know uh, over the years, and I remember his short little stint with Ring of Honor, and then when I saw that he signed with TNA, I was like, oh shit, I remember that's that what culture guy, and who man who could have thought you know that this would happen? You know what I mean? And I, and I remember seeing there's a clip. There's a video online. I don't. I. I. I maybe you've seen it. Uh, if you look up Joe Hendry, it's like a compilation of all his funny songs that he's made for opponents over the years, especially uh, during his time in ICW. You know where Drew uh, McIntyre was a champion of uh, before coming back to WWE. Uh, he even has a song that he made about Drew to the tune of a. Uh, 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 Oh my God, I'm blue. You know, I'm blue. And he's like, I'm Drew. <laughs> and I'm just a like, and I'm just a wrestling guy or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, Joe Hendry has been entertaining for a very long time. And it's just, it's, it's, it's time that he gets recognized and gets the recognition that he deserves. Joe Hendry even put it out there. He invited Eminem, Marshall Mathers himself. Slim Shady to come to Bound for Glory since it's in Detroit. <laughs> so, I don't know bro. if Eminem accept the invitation. Man, that'd be, that'd really crazy, bro. That would be crazy to see. But I mean, I, I mean, I, stranger things have happened. But I, I mean, I highly doubt it. But who knows? <laughs> but Bound for Glory sounds like it's going to be a solid, solid show, man. And I would love to see. Hopefully, TNA gets another sellout. Um, the, this this uh, agreement with WWE and NXT has been absolutely wonderful on both sides of the spectrum for both companies. It's it's done wonders for them both, and it's it's been it's been great for the industry as a whole. And hopefully, it continues uh, long term. I know Shawn Michaels has been vocal about saying he wants it to continue long term. Um, and I know TNA wrestlers have also have, have, you know have saying nothing but praises for this thing. And how it's it's I'm sure I'm sure it's 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 done wonders for their bank accounts as well in terms of like you know their you know their merchandise sales and and and, and the ticket sales you know what I mean it's TNA is doing is doing really really well right now and I just want to keep seeing that because it's good for the industry you know what I mean it's good it's good all around you know what I mean um, mm -hmm. we need a viable you need you know you need viable options um, you need places where talents can go and i feel like if things keep going it could be like um a relationship that ecw once had with wwe back in the day where like wwe would send ecw wrestlers that they weren't doing anything with and vice versa and wwe would get these new talents that they would just grow you know what i mean like al snow wasn't doing anything when he was Leaf Cassidy, uh, you know, a part of the new rockers with Marty Jannetty, he went to ECW, you know, sent down there and he reinvented himself and became the Al Snow that we know, you know, with, with head, you know, without his time in ECW, that wouldn't have happened. And I feel like TNA and, and WWE could eventually become this type of product, you know, this type of relationship. I mean, hell they've already signed, like I said, Zia Lee has got a new lease on life being signed to TNA. And, uh, and if, uh, if uh, the rumors are to be believed, uh, which I mean, I think they're more than rumors. I think it was all but confirmed that this coming Friday, the former multiple time TNA tag team champions and both former TNA world champions, Chris Saban, Alex Shelley will debut on SmackDown this coming Friday. I believe they are the mystery tag team that's going to face uh, Legado del Fantasma's Garza and, uh, and Umberto. So I'm looking forward to that. I mean, I mean, it's all but confirmed because uh, Nick Aldis said I have a match for y'all next week, but I'm not going to tell you who your opponents are, which it's going to be the Motor City Machine Guns. Well, it hasn't been yet, dude. Did those spray paint and everything? Yeah, yeah, you see it. It was like a real quick shot, but you saw the MCMG. Motor City Machine Guns are coming to the main roster, uh, which a lot of people, I mean, even I speculated that they were going to NXT, and me and you even talked about that, which uh, we were totally wrong. 
<laughs> so yeah, that was the original plan. You know, but hey, I mean, they they deserve to be on the main roster, and they deserve to uh, re rejuvenate that tag team division, which they most certainly will. Uh, man, those guys are gonna fucking cook, man. They're gonna have a great match. A great, I think the fans are gonna explode when they see the Motor City Machine Guns this coming Friday. So there you go. I mean, there that's already like kind of the same thing. It was like, you know what I mean? Like, um, I remember when the Dudley boys came up from ECW and showed up on WWF television at the time, you know what I mean? And look at what happened with them. They're one of the greatest tag teams of all time, especially because of that run they had, you know? And then they reinvented themselves again when they went to TNA. So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's just, it's just good all around. Like I said, for the industry, like I, I I'm enjoying what's been going on with, with, with their relationship. And I've been jo- enjoying TNA uh, really much. I would love for them to come do a show over here in my neck of the woods. And uh, hopefully I get a chance to, you know, actually uh, attend it. So, I mean, here's hoping, you know, um, and hey, shell hell, hopefully, man, they come to your neck of the woods too, bro. And maybe you can get yourself uh, to a TNA show. Yeah, they've, they've been to, um, I think they've been to Lafayette, but uh, they've definitely been in New Orleans. They've had some uh, tapings and everything in New Orleans. So at the, uh, uh, I want to say, no, nah, it wasn't the Lario Center. I think it was the Lakefront Arena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yes, that's true. Yeah, they did do that. And that was recent, I think, like within this year. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully they'll hopefully you'll you'll they'll come again and you'll get to see them, um. But man, oh shit! Well, damn, bro, we've we've gone we've almost gone uh we're we're almost at the two and a half hour mark. Uh, it's been it's been fun, man. This is this is this is what I love about having T five on the show because me and him could just fucking talk for hours. Like literally, we could talk for hours about this because you could we are truly passionate about uh, professional wrestling. So. Um, Man, we should have started the show off with Wrestle Dream, dude, because we didn't even get to that. I know, I know. Damn, we'll have to we'll have to save it for the next next week because I do want to talk about. I don't want to ignore it. I do want to talk about it, especially with um, you know, I feel and everybody's he hasn't even come out and said anything, but everybody's assuming, uh, you know, because of the conclusion of Wrestle Dream that um that Brian Danielson is officially you know done wrestling full time, so. Uh, we'll definitely have to really give our opinions on that and uh, that ending. That I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, but I guess it leaves it open because he already said that he wants to still be available to come back here and there. So yeah, part time. Yeah, I guess he didn't need. He doesn't need a complete actual send off because he's not, you know, not retired. retired. Yeah, he just, yeah, he just just part going to part time. Yeah. So I guess I mean in a way it makes sense, but. Um, I know a lot of people. There's a lot of uh, dis, you know, disgruntled fans about the ending, the way it, the way it went down. So, I mean, of course, it be, wouldn't be wrestling if it wasn't. <laughs> very true. <laughs> oh shit, guys, uh, fans, thank you for tuning in uh, once again to the IE Wrestling Show. Please follow me on X and TikTok, and please once again do me a favor and go to my Face of Horror page, faceofhorror.org backslash 2024 backslash martin dash sandoval and help me move on from the quarterfinals to the semifinals voting you can vote once a day for free all the way up until the 23rd of october so from now until the 23rd you can vote for me once a day for free if you feel the need that you want to donate to the cause uh to the foundation the starlight foundation that's a uh, sponsoring the event or sponsoring the contest um you know you you can make a as little of a donation as ten dollars uh, and uh, that'll get me 10 votes if you feel the need or feel the you know that you want to do that. I'm not asking y'all to do that, but if you feel like you want to, it, it goes to a good cause. You're not donating the money to me. You're donating the money to the foundation that's that's actually helping uh, uh, you know children of pediatric cancer and 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 other ailments. So it's it's for a good cause ultimately, and it's a tax write off too. So you know you can claim it on your taxes if need be. <laughs> anyway, and. Uh, Again, uh, please follow my boy uh, T5 on uh, his social media platforms on X, both what is, or who is T Fizzle. Sorry, I was said what is, who is T Fizzle, and <laughs> at Crescent City underscore IE. He is the host of the Crescent City Connection that's on Saturdays at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, do not miss it, guys. Uh, it's a great show. You will not be disappointed. Please follow all IE Sports Radio social media platforms on X, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at IE Sports Radio. 
and right now as well as our official uh, YouTube page, which we are currently streaming on, as well as on X at IE Sports Radio and all the um, podcasting platforms that were available on after the live stream. Go to our website, of course, iesportsradio.com, and check out our merch shop and get yourself one of these awesome official iSports Radio shirts. We got hats, tank tops. Hopefully, we'll have hoodies with the uh, fall and winter seasons about to begin. And, uh, yeah, with that, guys, uh, I think uh, I think we can call it a do today. Uh, T5, you got anything you want to promote or shout out before we uh, say goodbye to the fans here? Man, I just want to uh, thanks for uh, having me on again. And now that we're uh, official, we got to you know do like the uh, we got to do like a uh, uh, Carl Weathers and Arnold Schwarzenegger on um, credit to man. It's, 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 a t- it's a team now, man. That's a rap. That's a rap, man. For your favorite, uh, your favorite pod, your wrestling podcasters. That's a rap, dude. Well, we were taking yeah. over, man. That's the, right. The, the, the new mega powers, the new power trip. Oh, that's a wrap. Right. That's a right. That's right. Yeah, we got to do that. That Hogan and Macho Man handshake. Like, yeah, brother, we're going to connect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what you going to do, brother, when T5 and the SoCal State run wild on you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Thank you, T5. Thank you, man, for being here again. Uh, next week, guys, uh, me and T5 were talking about this. I, um, I mean, uh, uh, T5, you're going to be with me next week, correct? I'm, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> All right, so next week, uh, we're, we're going to do things a little different. Uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about wrestling, don't get me wrong, but um, I was bringing – I brought this up before we went on the air uh, – Talk. There was. A, there's been a lot of discussion. You know, the word "cinematic" has been thrown around a lot this year for professional wrestling. It's cinema. <laughs> cinema. It's cinema. It's cinema. It's cinematic. Uh, you know, WWE, so to speak, especially during WrestleMania season, people compared the run to WrestleMania as uh, Infinity War and Endgame from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The, you know, the the last two Avengers films. And me and T5 are both, not only are we huge, passionate wrestling fans, uh, we're passionate nerds. We love <laughs> we love comic book films as well. And we're actually going to uh, throw a little bit of pop culture into the podcast next week. We're going to go over our top 10 favorite comic book films. I want to say of all time, because I mean, like, hell... I mean, there's there's so many more that are still down the line coming, but I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, just our top ten uh, that we uh, that we feel of our favorite uh, comic book films. You know, this isn't just uh, you know in terms of uh, just Marvel. I mean, it could be any comic book film. You know, it could be a a DC film. It could be an independent you know comic book film that was made from uh, you know Dark Horse or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, because I mean, like uh, wrestling and comic books have a lot in common, you know. Like uh, a lot of people compare it. To, I mean, there's a lot of synergy there. Yeah, exactly. Like I mean, a lot of people compare it to superheroes in real life because that's how they're presented. You know what I mean? I mean, hell, mm-hmm. um, I mean Hogan. His his name was Hulk. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> like oh, like. Yeah, man, yeah. Uh, Hogan was uh, it was booked at one time as the Incredible Hulk Hogan, you know what I mean? Before he became the Immortal Hulk Hogan, but I mean that's that's what it is. Uh, comic books and wrestling, it's bad guys versus good guys, you know, evil versus good. The good guys have to over- triumph over evil, and it, that's what I'm saying. Like comic books and wrestling kind of go hand in hand, and that, I mean the comparisons are pretty damn spot on. You know what I mean? So. Uh, I know me and T5 are definitely going to be excited to talk about that next week. I, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking for you, but I'm, I mean, I'm sure you can say it for yourself, brother. I mean, that's going to that's gonna be a lot of fun, man. And if y'all have y'all favorite uh, movies, put them in the comments section, wherever you find us at. We'll read them out. You know, it's, we'll compare. You know, so, hey, y'all may have some different ones than us. Hey, you may like some of those trash ones that, you know, we're, hey, 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 you may be a fan of that OG Punisher with Dolph Lundgren? That was my movie, dude. Hey, 
hey, hey, hey, some of y'all may disagree. Hey, we'll, we'll, hey, leave it in the comments. We'll, we'll talk over. It's going to be a discussion. It'll be fun. We'll have fun. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun next week, guys. So do not miss out. Same SoCal Saint time, same SoCal Saint channel right here on IE Sports Radio with the IE Wrestling Show. T5 and the SoCal Saint back at it again next week. We'll see you guys. Take care. Stay blessed. Stay safe. And uh, God bless y'all. Take care.